Uh, as you can see, we've had a late sub on the on the panel this evening. Sean Fanning couldn't make it. A uh, very, very big thank you to Michael O'Sullivan for stepping in. The panel will go from left to right. We have Dara O'Keefe with us from Donrell. Dara, of course, had his first festival with last year when he parted uh, Mascada to win the Grand Annual. Paddy Merrigan, we all know, uh, spent his time in professional jockey in England. Hadn't a winner at the festival, but struck the bar a few times. Paddy is now running a very successful uh, sports betting service called Beer Sports. Uh, with Michael O'Sullivan, who probably needs no introduction to the local people anyway. The Shark, the shark I gave a great introduction to last year, and without having to go over the same amount of races you've won again. Of course, since last year, he's gone on to win the Oxy Chase and the Grade 1 King George with Hewitt. So a very, very special welcome to the Shark. Mark Landers is like me. He kind of got roped into this and couldn't say no. Mark, we probably know from, well, most of us might know from growing up when he played hurling in Captain Cork to win the Ireland. But of course, he's a very prominent owner and breeder. And him, uh, along with TJ Ryan and Anthony Daly, run uh, the Come On Racing Club. They've won a couple of bumpers with Willie Mullins. And he's had a bit of success himself on the flat at the dock and the nice river at the Galway Festival. And last but not least, of course, is our own Eugene O'Sullivan. Uh, twice a winner at the Sheldon Festival, lovely citizen, and of course it came to pass. So we'll kick on. Uh, as we all know, we're, it's it's early for uh, a preview, I suppose. We can't hide from that. So the handicap entries came out the other day for the nine races, but we'll touch on every race, but we'll go in, in race card order. And the first race of the week on the Tuesday will be the Skybet Supreme Novice Hurdle. Uh, you can see from your sheets there, uh, Ballyburn is the evens favourite. Now, the, the big question with that horse is, will it run in this race? We, we, we're hoping <laughs> we're hoping it will. Uh, it's evens there. I think you might be able to get a bit longer if you shop around. Tully Hill, Mystical Power Fire, Fox. Jericho to rip it in there as well. Uh, Dysart, Enos, I think, would probably run somewhere in the mare's hurdle. So... This race, to me, any horse that won a novice hurdle was automatically thrown in as a favourite for the Supreme anywhere, any, any horse that won a bumper in Ireland. But Bally Byrne probably had the most impressive of the runs at Leopardstown. Paddy, we'll start off with you. Is there... Uh, Bally Byrne's the easy one. Is there something in there that can take him on? Uh, it's a real tricky affair to start off one because we obviously don't know... Uh, what's going on with the Willie Mullins camp? He has so many horses that could be uh, potential winners of this race for sure. Uh, one thing I will say is I don't see Willie Mullins running the tree it, 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 unless the owners, you know, really put their foot down and wanted up the run. He will split them. So um, just to, to sorry, just for the sheet. So the top three in the betting are actually all trained by Willie Mullins. Belly Burn, Tully Hill, Mystical Power. Yeah, so touch on Ballyburn. Obviously, you know, state the obvious, he's a very good horse. The right trip is is the middle distance, we know that. But Willie's won this race with, you know, these stairs before to have the ability to win. Tully Hill has kind of come on the scene late. Mystical Power looks classy, but his form could be not. But he's definitely an improver. Firefox has to bounce back. Jericho the Reppin is a very good horse. He, he won in Doncaster on a day that... He probably wasn't fit to canter up the gallop. Uh, when he came out, there was something about that weekend. Uh, Nicky Henderson's horses just were s just flat. He had a lot of horses. John Bond disappointed. I know Sergino looked very good. You could mark him up. But Jericho the Repine, when he was walking around at the start, I thought he was, you know, a thousand to one shot. He was dead, empty. So he won ugly. He beat a very good horse in doing so. But Willie Mullins looks uh, really strong in this race, so it's hard to give you one at the minute, but I have a few good ones there. Very good. But it's hard to Michael, of course. Michael won this race on Marine National for uh, Barry Connell. Michael, anything in there to oppose Willie's? Uh, I wouldn't say there's anything to oppose Willie's. Uh, I'm in there a good bit. I think Ballyburn could probably run this, in my opinion. I'd say Ballyburn run this, and Tully Hill could go to the... Bearing now. <clears throat> Another one of Willie's though that's not even on the sheet there that could be one for each way of money is a horse called Asian Master. He's uh, 30, 33 to one shot at the minute. Yeah, 33 to one. He's definitely worth a five for each way. Um, I finished behind him in a maiden hurdle in Thurlis 
second horse came out and won a maiden hurdle by 10 lengths after. He won and not in the last day, beat better days ahead by 10 lengths as well. And he's only been trained now. Uh, it'll be a great story for the Costellos. And uh, I think he's a sneaky one there that'll have a good each way chance. So just to confirm, that's Asian Master. It's uh, trained by Willie, owned by the Costellos, and will be ridden by it's Tom Costello, isn't it? So the owner's son, Tom, rides this horse and has won, yeah, won his last couple of bumpers on him very, very impressively. Chair? Yeah, I'd say Willie will go with a strong hand here. He, he liked to have the festival to a win in March, so he will. And um, if Ali Byrne goes, he's going to take a lot of beating. Um, Firework or Firefox beat Ali Byrne in Fairy House. But I'd say that more than likely, I'd say Valley Bourne wasn't fully ready for it. Um, it is very hard to pass Willie's. I'd say he'd probably run two with the three, or maybe he could run four or five in it. But um, he, he'll spare either Valley Bourne or Tully Hill. One of the two of them will go a different race, and whichever of them two runs, um, I think they're going to take all the beat. Anyone else have a fancy outside of the top three? Yeah, just I, I, I just saw the race in Doncaster with um, Mr. Hamilton's horse win. You have to go against Willie, I think he won a win for the rest of the So that's Jericho de Riffin for you, Gene. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, I'm, I might be mistaken here, but I think Tully Hill has only got one entry, um, and that's in the Supreme. Um, Belly Bourne obviously is after twice for the bearing of his hurdle and the Supreme. So I think in that situation, you could have Tully Hill will go for the Supreme. Um, he's not a brilliant jumper, but he's got a huge engine. And um, for me, I would agree with the lads and so far that I think Willie will win winners and he will go strong. But the fact that Tully Hill has only one entry, I think that'll end up running in the Supreme and Belly Bourne will go for the other race. And you could end up with the two of them still winning. Yeah, you're spot on. It's his only entry. Seven to two there, but you get it. You get nine to two. You might get five to two in places tomorrow morning. Hopefully, as long as Max money doesn't go down. So, uh, nothing else jumping out off the sheet. So we'll move down on to the next race on the card, which will be the Arkel. So the Arkel, of course, there is a very, very, very nice favourite in here. Uh, Michael, I suppose we'll have. We better turn to you first here. Marie National in here at nine to four for yourself and Barry Connell. How is he since his last run in Leprechaun? He's good, Brian. Yeah, he came out of the race fine. Um, nothing showed up. No excuse for him, really. It was disappointing on the day, obviously. Uh, just have to put a line to it. He wasn't happy. He wasn't himself, but um, he's been fine since. He's in good form at home. Um, looking to get him to check him like he was last year. It's a wide open arc now. Uh, I wouldn't be talking for anything else in it. Um, obviously, he let a thump one in, in that percent the last day, just touched off down to 50. Not sure what Gaelic Warrior will do uh, or Fasad Vega. I, he might go up and trip. Uh, the English horse JPR1 probably make the running and fall away after the third last. Um, Elixias might be one each way for Henry, but you know he'll have to step up again. But he did win the triumph. But uh, yeah, I still wouldn't stop Marine for anything else in it. Very good. Dara, any line on the dress? Yeah, look, uh, I, I thought Marie National was exceptional in his beginners at, at um, Christmas, and, you know, it, 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 everybody, it was just a shot that he got beat the last day. Um, he let a thump, um, obviously, he'd, he'd won at the Dublin Racing Festival, or he'd won at Leperstown last year as well, and been disappointed in the Supreme. Um, I think Quilixios is an each way chance. Um, won his beginners well and then he didn't stay over three miles and um he was good in Nays the last day but I think if Marie National turns up in the same form as he did last year I think it'll be very hard to beat. And obviously you you have a line on the horses and Henry's he will he I think this is his only race he's going to plan on running with Seal Sanam, isn't it? Uh, yeah he'll he'll definitely run in this as I said he 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 tried him over further and he didn't stay so you know as as Michael said JPR one will make the running and they'll go fast and furious and they'll suit him and I don't think he'll be good enough to beat Marie National, but he's definitely an, an each way a chance. Good, thank you. Eugene? 
I look forward to the new national and of course to Michael. But your destiny, I think, will be a good each way, Beth. Okay. Right yeah, he's 40 to 1 uh, for Willie Mullins. He's he is, he's in there 12s, yeah, 14 to 1. He's entered in the uh, in the turners as well, but he's a shorter price for this. You were going to assume he'll run like Willie's. We have to assume when the money is down for some of them that that's their intended route. I'd say he left me wrong. He, he yeah. ran over 2 3 in Punchstown the last day. And got beat by Arsenal Jimmy Mangans actually. I'm not sure if he's going to Chetland's to Lance Tower, but if he does, I'd keep an eye on him. And Blood Destiny was highly fancy for the Triumph Hurdle last year and went, ran way too free. Um, but I'd agree with you, Dean. Uh, 33 to 1, he'd be worth it five each way as well. Right, so it's a bit of an each way bet there, and of course, a um, lot of lump on William Motion as well. So, uh, not on your sheets there. As I said, the entries came out for the handicaps during the week. Uh, there, there is prices on all these races, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll touch on them all. The Ultima would be the third race on the card on the Tuesday, so that's uh, a long distance handicap chase. Uh, Gordon actually is a favourite for this, a horse that ran in the, um, the stable staff race at Punchestown on something called the Goffer. He's eight to one in this. He actually, you won't see that line of form in your. Um, in your racing post, but he won, he won handy enough in a two mile flat race. Also, in there, it might be a race for the English to win. Kim Bailey has a horse called Chianti Classico at 10 to 1. Harry, you're a keen studier of the English races. This horse have a chance? The golfer's a lovely horse, uh, but he won't stay the trip. He'll travel the best, he'll look the best. But I see him as more of a 2 6 horse. Uh, the Brandy guy is a Richard Brandy or RJ Brandy. He has a, an unexposed horse in here who ran okay behind Ginny's Destiny. Theatre Man. Last day. Theater Man. I think he's lightly enough raced. Um, he stayed on strong enough over the 2 5, but he didn't stay as strong when he ran at Newbury over 2 7. He's probably well handicapped, but that's a very tra trappy race until you see the weights. Yes. Uh, next week, but he definitely is a live one. If John Joe runs his horse, um, I can't think of his name now. He was third in it last year. Uh, he'd have to be the horse to beat for sure. Um, Monbeck genius. Monbeck genius. There's a there's a stat in this race, lads. It just favours horses that've been to Cheltenham before. It favours horses that have that course experience, and he has it now. And he's probably still ahead of the handicapper. And I think if he runs in it, he's the most likely winner. Monbeck genius. So Monbeck Genius, I mentioned for Paddy. I actually do like that horse, Theatre Man. He was second. Uh, is that Trials Day at the end of January in Cheltenham? So of course, Farm. I do like that horse, Theatre Man, for myself. If you want to believe, me, if you want to take a tip from me, and Monbeck Genius in there are about fourteen to one for Paddy. So uh, I'll just give you one stat on that race. The day you're looking at and thinking of having your bet, the last ten winners have all had some sort of headgear on. Very good, thank you, Paddy. Now, the champion hurdle is, is probably the biggest question in this race is how many horses are even going to run it? Uh, who's going to take on Constitution Hill? Constitution Hill, a one to four shot, is kind of crazy price. Obviously, there's a, a, a decent market in betting without this horse. Maybe you might get a bit of touch. And still probably odds on for state men to finish second. Lassie Mout, we're going to assume, will not run in this race, Michael, if you any idea. No, no. the mares, yeah. yeah, very good. So Irish Point uh, probably might run in the stairs as well. Like you could question every horse that has an entry in this race. Will will they even turn up? Uh, Shark, is there anything like what? Oh. What can you do? No, ah. there's no point in losing on this. Is there? Maybe yeah. behind the distance or something like that. But that's the way it's Would be. Would you have been? What? Would you have been? You want a bit more time, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. You hate to just say right, right. The favourite's going to win, but he has been so so exceptional in all his run. Nicky Henderson has came out today and he said uh, the horse won't obviously won't run before Cheltenham, but for some reason the horse needs an away day to prime himself uh, for Cheltenham. So we're we're probably going to see him. Probably about 57 cameras in some race course in the south someday soon on racing TV just to see this horse do a bit of a temper. 
yeah, as, as the lad said, the distance bet might be something, maybe eight lengths or more or something like that. The only, the only, I suppose the only thing I'd say, Brian, like, is that, you know, like he obviously is the best race, and he's the best horse in the race if he turns up in the final, if he turns up in last year. But he'd be one of maybe a very few, I would say, horses going into the race with only one run under their belt. Yeah. Like Statham's after running three times has been really impressive. I didn't think Statham was put into the race last year. I think they were all running for second place yeah. last year. I think this is obviously going to come down to two horses. You know, obviously he's constituted him is the best horse in the race. But he might just turn up on the day. I would think he will. But I, I mean, what, difference, what, difference does it, what difference does it make when you have a one or you know, like just everyone has great gallops so. and I you can do as much at home as you want to. It's like constant the hill there. You can you you could take a man with three different arts at home, have him fit. It, like there'll be no such thing as not fit. Barry makes mistakes and falls. That's the only way he can get better. Yeah, well I I don't disagree with you there, Shot, but it's a bit like playing championship Holland, you could be the best team like Nimmer could going for a the drive for five, they're going for five in a row this show. But there's every chance they can't be beaten in one throw like. So like there's no questioning he's the best horse in the race. And you're right about the gallops and stuff like that, but I still think Statement is going to turn up one hundred percent. And I still think there's a question mark about Constitution Hill. I wouldn't be taking one to four or one to five. So maybe Paddy, Paddy has money to be lashing around and maybe one to ten and stuff like that. But for for me, I'd be laying all day long. I don't like short ones, but honestly, lads, the horse, I done the other night, I, we were just chatting there, myself and Michael, you know Stateman all year, you were watching him running and you are like, fuck, he's got better, and then I was thinking, oh, he might actually put it up to him, Constitution Hill, he's only had one run, Stateman's been busy, he's been winning, okay races, like his main danger kind of bombed out this year, so that kind of knocks his performances a tiny bit, but he can only do what he can do. But I was up the other night at 4 o'clock in the morning watching back all Constitution Hills runs. Lads, he is a jumbo jet plane and the, State the, Man the, is going to be the cut. Children, were the children crying or what? They drove before the night. Were the children? Or were you about with the bedroom or what? Mostly it's up on you because that's the only way you get him up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I was writing up that invoice for the 15,000 you all met. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm happy to have my leg in you up in the Gold Cup. If he wins it, you'll be hearing from me. Dara, do you want to be, like, is, there, is there a way of beating him? Like we see, could more use tactics in flat races. Is there anything to really running forward? Is, boxing in, is there, is, like, Force him into a mistake, is, is he flawless? I, I think so, and you know, like to be honest about him just having the one run, Nicky Henderson to me is as good as any man to get one to Cheltenham and to be targets these festivals. But at Constitution Hill, um, I'd say Aintree was the shortest distance, he actually won a race by I think he won three or four lengths, um, but that was obviously over two and a half miles. But you know, I think they have to say that State Man has you know has improved this year because. What other way could you go about beating him? Like, he beat him nine lengths, and, you know, you'd be saying he wasn't put into the race, but for me, he just wasn't able to go with him, and I'd be, I, I, I think Constitution Hill might even have to be at his best to win. I think he would, yeah. Unfortunately, folks, it's, it's an unanimous decision for, for Constitution Hill. <laughs> like, is there anything to be said for the likes, of, like, in each way? But, no, like, a horse, a horse to finish, finish third, like Zarek the Brave, or anything like that. No? <laughs> so the mayor's hurdle is next up on the card. I'm afraid it's not on your uh, it's not on your penny power sheets there, but neither is Hugh. But we'll get to that later. Uh, so the mayor's hurdle. This is actually a cracking little race. Unfortunately, Willie is going to dominate the entries anyway. Lossy Mount, very impressive uh, last time out. He's in at four to six favourite, followed by the Supreme Racing Horse Astro Diamond at four to one. And then you have a fleet of runners, Echoes and Rain, 14, Marie's Rock, uh, a winner, previous festival winner, Lovin Vaughan, who was second to Honeysuckle last year. Dara, you might have, well, you should have a line on this race. Hispanic Moon came up uh, a winner in the Quivega Mayor's Hurdle at Punchestown yesterday. 
uh, you've probably thrown a bit of a spanner in the works for the horse and the turd. Gala Marceau, sorry, has uh, been a huge drift uh, overnight after finishing third behind Dara. Hispanic Moon, of course, these are the colours you won on at the festival last year. Think she has a chance here? Yes, you know, we, she was very impressive in Punchestown on her first start. Um, she came home from France and then, you know, um, we, we really fancied her at Leopardstown at Christmas and she ran no race at all and, um, you know, she, she didn't, um, you know, there was reasons for it and, uh, you know, she was very impressive yesterday. Um, obviously, she was getting weight off Garland Marceau, but I think she won eight, eight, eight lengths or something. She ended up winning in the end and quickened up really well. Um, obviously, Lassie Mount looks really good. Uh, you know, she looked spectacular at, at Cheltenham, um, you know, in January. But, you know, I suppose she is going to be going into unknown territory of, you know, up to two mile four as well. And, you know, you just obviously connections feel like she will stay and she probably will stay but um yeah i think my one i think i was looking at the race actually um for my one at one and she was like 100 to one or something and now she's is she 14 or 16 to one so i definitely think she could be in the be in the frame and uh as i said i think lassie mount is very good and she's a worthy favorite but i wouldn't be surprised if my one was in the first three yeah yeah very good so that's hispanic moon uh, trained by Henry de Bromhead. So it's in there about a 16 to 1 shot. Hopefully it'll be that price again tomorrow morning. Michael, anything in there to oppose Lassie Mount? No, she won't come off the bridle, I think. Um, I was lucky enough to ride her work in the curl before she went to Cheltenham, and I said after, if I ever ride a filly better than this, then you won't very well, because uh, just the feeling you get off a horse and makes you want to do it and get up every morning, and she's unbelievable. And that feeling I got off her that day. I think she's quickening up and then she just lengthens again and keeps lengthening and she's awesome. I do think Dara's mare was good yesterday. I think Gala Marceau, I'd say something showed up for her this morning, but uh, Dara's mare definitely has a chance, each way chance anyway. Uh, but I don't think Lassie Mount will come off the rider. Eugene? Yeah. I'd have to go with her. Leopardstown last year, she was in the there. She got beaten by the mare that was the Bad just then. But she made up for it in Cheltenham. I think she's a very, very, very good mare. And it looks something you really have to, they'll have to really improve to get better for it, in my opinion. Very good. So, yeah, next, second in the betting is Astro Diamond, of course, who had a, a win at Doncaster, of all places, uh, at the end of last month. Any chance at all, Mark, do you think? <laughs> yeah, um... Patrick was on with us the other night in the Command Racing Club uh, AGM and he, he fancies last season more, but he said it's the first time that she's up to two and a half miles. She's flat bred and he said, look, we expect she'll get the two and a half miles, but just he's had that in the back of his mind and he felt that Astro Diamond um, is a really, really good horse and has been running mainly against Geldings since uh, she started racing. She obviously won the four-year-old uh, bumper in entry. And uh, he gave that a good speaking up now. So if I was, if, if they bet him without, I'd be definitely looking at, at Astro Diamond. I suppose a question for Dara there is that, you know, the Marigas are the owners of um, the Hostel won yesterday, Hispanic Moon. They have a second filly called Lantry Lady that won in Gorn Park. Is there a possibility that both of them will run in that race? I'd say, I'd say um, definitely uh, two of them are, after after Lantry Lady winning um, the other day in Gorn, it, it seemed like all systems go for, for the mayor's race. Um, the only thing I would say about Lantry Lady is, you know, she's ran twice in Gorn, the ground both days she's ran has been very, very heavy, and uh, that had just been the one, one question with her. Um, I think, you know, the ground would want to be near soft on the day for her to turn up, but... Uh, She's a mare that doesn't really show a lot at home, but she's won her maiden hurdle well. And um, she actually beat um, Conor Keith's mare, Silent Approach, in her maiden hurdle last year. This, around this time last year, she won by 15 or 16 lengths. And Conor Keith's mare has gone on to, you know, be in place and won a grade of chase and stuff. So um, she definitely will run, I'd say, as long as the ground is safe. But uh, obviously she's only won over two miles as well. But... Uh, yeah, I think the softer the ground, she'd have an each way a chance, but I think she'd want to be very soft. 
Just to give a mention, I suppose, you know, the Irish aren't going to win every race by the champion hurdle. Marie's Rock is in here, Paddy. Has course form, has won at the festival. Any chance? 16 uh, to 1? I, I don't think so, no. Uh, she, she looked pretty good at times, but she's too inconsistent. James Bowen absolutely carried her across the line the last day. One of the best rides you'll ever see. Uh, Henry's other horse, tell me something, girl. Is that running? She'll run as well. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She, I think she's the most likely second to the favourite. I just, I know she's eight or nine. What age is she? Nine. She's, yes, yeah, nine. she's nine year old. She's steadily progressive this year in her form. She came up against Sarah the Brave. They're talking about running him in the champion hurdle. So I think if you were one to look at an outsider to finish second, maybe just back her without Lossie Mouth, because we're, we're all in agreement that Lossie Mouth is a standout in the race. So tell me something, girl, without the favourite. That's a 20 to 1 shot for that race, Paddy, and it's her only entry for the week, so it's look like she'll take that on. We'll move on. We'll keep the tick ticking over the mare's hurdle, so we've got Willie, Willie after winning three of the first, so we're into handicap uh, company then. Just, do you mind, just before we move on to uh, the next day, I just don't want to be set beside this man and not pick his brains for two minutes about the article, because... Uh, Marine National is a horse I followed, you know, since he won in Killarney, he won the look at Jet. I think it was only like a four-runner race. Um, I know you say the last day nothing showed up with the horse and there wasn't much of an excuse, but just to get your feeling, I, I could come up with five excuses for him, the why that he got beat. Uh, when, he went into the, when he went into the parade ring, he was in a little early. Your man, I think it was Kevin O'Reilly, or some of them was doing their introductions and he got a little bit buzzed. Another thing I noticed, when he was down at the start, he didn't plant himself, but he was just freezing a small little bit. And then when he lined up down the inner where it just it didn't favour any horse this whole year at Leperstone. And uh, I just thought to myself, uh, with the change of tactics, just before I go any further, what was the reason? You just wanted to ride him a little bit colder, or was it because he was a little buzzed? Why did you just go that route? I just wanted to gauge it. Uh, I suppose before the race, obviously we made run on the beginning of chase, but other than that, he's always been exactly in. He's a horse that has loads of class and loads of boot, like he's a very fast horse. So no matter how slow they went, I'd have been happy, you know, I'd always have backed him to have that bit of pace to get by the rest of them. Um, as it turned out, they didn't go as fast as, I think I went faster in the beginning of chase on him. Uh, to be honest, I don't think if I rode him any way differently, it might have made any difference, but I'd agree with you in that when I came out of the way room, when he was on his toes, I did get a bit worried because he'd never done that before. He didn't look happy. Uh, the minute I saw him in the, in the parade ring, he wasn't happy. And when I got on him, I, I was the same. I wasn't happy with him, whether the bridle was on wrong or the cross nose bend or tongue tie or whatever it was. There was something not right with him on the day. Um, he, he looked he looked to me, after jumping the first two feet, he, he, he just wasn't trapping to see it. Would it be in the ground was so heavy? I think so. Uh, obviously, you know, you'd have people that argue then that the ground was yeah. soft at Christmas, but the ground at Christmas was fresh oh, ground. It yeah. hadn't been galloped on. The ground, the ground. And uh, like with off. four days of racing over Christmas with Paddy Power and big handicaps like that, you're going into the same ground. Absolutely. Like for the top track in the country to have the same used ground again two months later. Yeah. Uh, it was very dead ground, used ground. Um, it was a lot harder work for a horse. Um, when, when, I, when I looked out in the first and second, he looked, he looked nearly to be struggling. Just wasn't carrying the way he did in the beginner chase. Yeah, like I, I was happy to jump on the first, but after that, I was always never as comfortable as I normally would be. You know. Yeah, just to come in there again, he was very fresh his first day, so he travelled really well. And uh, just you know, when 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 he was going down the back, it was the first fence by the stands. He made a little mistake, and then the next one down, he it didn't look a bad mistake on telly. I bet you it felt a lot worse than it looked. You know, the first fence in the back straight. Just kind of made that little error, and I said this could be enough to, to, you know, to get him done. But look, anyway, my opinion on the horse is he's an absolute jet, right? And if he's back to form on the day, I think it's a one-horse race because the rest of them just aren't classy enough to beat the horse. So if you can take the opinion forward, can you give him an excuse in Epperstown, and I can give him five. So if he bounces back, it'll be an easy day's work, and you'll have an article in the bag. Hopefully. Keep him in the clear. He's the best. Thanks, Paddy. Uh, the next race, uh, as another handicap on the first day, it's the Boodle, the Fred Winter, 
juvenile handicap hurdle first, not on your sheets, as I said. As Paddy said, uh, the entries are out for these races, but the the weights are not. Uh, is anyone anything in their head for the Fred Winter? No. <laughs> so there's a horse. Uh, Gordon Elliott has a horse in here called Woodhoo or Woodhoo will probably be somewhere near high in the weights. It's running on Sunday. Actually, and it has a good chance, but it's it's an eight to one shot now. If it, if it gets in, I think it has a nice chance. It, the price will be gone should it win uh, the juvenile hurdle in Nace on Sunday. So that's all I can offer on that. It's the horse called Wood. Ooh, if it will run, of course. No. Okay. He entered him into three races. Yeah, he's yeah, he's he going to that, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Sharp. Right. Put a line through that. Owners will be happy with their entry bill. <laughs> the Every race and yeah. I know, I know, I know the owners. And, and, um, they said before he won the last day, but they don't want to. Ah, very good. That's all right. Thank you, Cher. The last race on the card on Tuesday is the National Hunt Chase. Uh, so this race is headed by Willie Mullins, a horse called Embassy Gardens. But next in the betting is a horse for Emmett Mullins that has come from the yard of Eugene O'Sullivan, a horse called Corbett's Cross, who was, had a funny old fall uh, last day out, Eugene. This is the horse's only entry for the festival. I think this is a right good bet at 72. Yeah, he was very lucky last day. Two horses just veered into each other and, and brought him down. I don't think Emmett was too happy with the way, I think Emmett wanted him to, to make it and, and just have an easy run around. Um, I think they're happy with the horse still. I think they're riding him all wrong myself, to be quite honest. I think they should be riding him more forward. And it's not half, Eugene. It's all my new collection. All the colours that her Adam turned to come down at him, wasn't it? Huh? Come on up for a cup of tea That's down the back somewhere. I think, of him. I think that he, he, they ride him more forward. I think he's still the best horse in the race. That, he's, that's his only entry, so he will be running in that race. And I saw him last week. I was up there, and he was looking very well. I think. Yes. Yeah, none the worse from his fall. No, yeah. no, they're happy out of it. Very good. Anyone else, anything else to offer on the National Hunt Chase? This, is, of course, is a, an amateur race. Uh, just a quick word. Uh, obviously, as I said to Eugene in the bar, I genuinely believe Corbett's Cross looked a superstar last year but I don't think he's as good as he once looked uh, I know he has good real like he has brilliant bits of form when he's good but I think he has um, maybe came a little peg down from when he won and I believe the day new connections got him they didn't bust him to be found at 50 over 2 miles but they did ask him a question and then they went back to the 3 mile race in Cheltenham maybe they just thought let's take this golden opportunity we can maybe be found at 50 but I think it backfired I know the horse went to Cheltenham and ran out at the last but he was beat before he ran out um, the only thing I will say if he would win a race it would be this one the favourite looks good but I, I'm worried the jockey could deck him he's a big, he's a big what are you laughing at? He did fall in that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Embassy Gardens is a gorgeous big horse, but he's a big looping cha chaser with scope. Paul Townham made him look easy the other day. Wait to see how the next man makes him look. Mark, do you want to come in there? Are you a layer of the horse, or, uh, Eddie? If you want to back him, I'll lay him. But you better come strong. Are you giving, are you giving, are you giving three to one? Yeah? I'll give you a 33 to one. I'll give you a 3 to 1 for whatever you want. I'll just score that though with you. Score a 3 to 1. All right, lads, I'm heading home. I thought I was going to do business down here. <laughs> oh, look, just to put a bit of context, just before I pass over, Embassy Garden is clearly a machine and he's a very good horse. Um, he should, he's the most likely winner of this race. However, just to let you in on a little secret, favourites have an absolute disastrous record in the race. He, when he won the last day, Townman set him up at every fence. It might look like it to the normal eye, but any man who has his money on is watching close. And the horse was put in spots to jump. And I believe uh, Patrick Mullins is a wonderful jockey in the bumpers. He's a wonderful uh, guy. I know him well. Real nice guy. But when it comes to jumping a fence, he, he lacks a small bit in picking the right spots. 
on, Mark. I, I, did the name escapes me 100%? No, but did he win the race last year on the grey horse? Yeah. On, a, on a horse that ran 50 times and won a grey ball. But he did win, didn't it? And checked on the stand, or yeah? With two, two, two to one. one and right. So. And, uh, and this has win as well, so he'll win it two years in a row now. Yeah, well, he'll go, he go back to back, but yeah, I, it's I, different I, class, I'd say, than the rest of these yeah. horses. No, the, the only thing I will say is that, like, the Mendes training, Starbucks Cross, right, after taking over from Eugene's early days, is Emmett Mullins, and he is, for me, one of the shrewdest trainers that's on the track, young trainers that's there at the moment. And obviously, he's got a very, very shrewd owner at the moment. And I like a lot of people. The, the first day he ran, it was a very, very competitive race. And uh, Tree Park Bragg was in the race. And um, another horse of Henry has it. That was a very, very competitive race. It was never put into it until maybe jumping the last and one got up on the line. I, I'd be having a right, I'd be having a right few quid. I know you're going to be. I have a right fan of Patrick Mullins and I wouldn't uh, let it go, Penny, that you'd be slagging him off and stuff for that now, but um, I'd be having a, a serious wager on Carpets Cross in this race. So that's a, so there's a reason I work for the punter and the rest of them are sponsored by the bookies, so remember that. Dara, have you been to offer on? I always thought you were for yourself. But anyway, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I'd be a big fan of Carver's Cross in this as well. Um, Embassy Gardens has looked definitely a better chaser, but I think Carver's Cross has achieved more over hurdles even than what Embassy Gardens did. Um, you know, it took him, I think it took, he had three runs in maidens and he got beaten, and then he won one day in Thurless. He pissed in, he disappointed the Albert Bartlett. Um, you know, he's looked good in his two chase starts, but I think Carver's Cross has achieved more than what he has and uh, as you said Derek O'Connor is definitely going to ride him in this and um, you know just misfortune of what happened the last day but you know I thought he was very good he was very good in winning his beginner's chase in Fairy House and if you look at that race since like three car Bragg came out the other day and won the Irish or he was um, second again sorry in Punches Town and um, you know obviously Henry's horse Mon Mon Monty Star has won since as well and even the fourth horse in the race won Nick Rocket. So I think that race or that beginners that Carver's Cross won has worked out really well. And you know, he just fell into one as he liked. And uh, you know, I, I, I think he'll take serious stuff in this. Okay. We all happy with Tuesday. Penny, any more questions for Michael now? Make <laughs> <laughs> the run and I'm marine. I'll feel safer. <laughs> But one of the questions, I suppose, just from a GA perspective, Michael, like, have yourselves known Gary O'Connell when he sat down, had a chat around the table and said, look, this is the way he ran in the, in the first day he ran, what went wrong in the second day, are you making a plan now, you know, it's a bit like a match going into it, like, what are the plans, like, are you sitting now having a chat about this every day and saying, look, how are we going to get this lad over the line and certainly? Um, no. <laughs> Good answer. Not at all. Um... I went out to ride Mr. Green from last year, and we didn't talk about the race once before. Uh, he left it up to me, and uh, it was the same when he was beginner's chase, and it was the same the last day. Now, when he was beginner's, he said, look, do you want to make it do? And the last day, he was didn't really want me to make the run. So uh, he leave it up to me, and um, I do think that JPR won and go a gallop. Um, and he set it up for the rest of us come behind. They always go mentally to speed in the arc and stuff. Uh, I'd be happy enough to do the same again, yeah. I'd actually agree with Paddy there about Corbett's Cross. They ran him over two miles in Nace, and they shouldn't have, because he was way too free then in the Albert Bartlett. He never settled once, uh, and he panted that over three miles, and he got very tired. Uh, he was unlucky the last day. He ran the grade one in, in Leprosound over Christmas, uh, finished second, but was never really put into the race. Um, I think it's a two-horse race between him and Embassy Gardens, and... Uh, I'd fancy Derek O'Connor as well. You're clearly the two best horses in the race. Um, like I said, just Corbett's Cross, he's just a bit of an enigma, but I think you summed it up there. There is reasons maybe why he didn't perform his best after the, the race in Nace or wherever it was. Thanks, gentlemen. So we'll put a cap on Tuesday and we'll go straight into Wednesday. First race on the card, the, the Barring Bingham, Novices Hurdle.
Uh, most people probably would still call it uh, the Barrymore. This is this is or the Ballymore, excuse me. This is uh, two miles five. You'll see a lot of horses entered here that are also entered in the Supreme Ballyburn. Unfortunately, heads the market uh, for this race as well. We're thinking it's going to favour the Supreme. Obviously, on your sheets there, it's a 10 to 11 shot. But if you look now, he's up at around 3 to 1. He is still favoured. But obviously, the bookmakers are thinking he's not uh, going to run here. So in behind, then, we have Slade Steel Il Atlantique. So uh, the prices on your sheets, they're probably a bit short than, than reality for now. Mystical Power is a 6 to 1 shot as of now, leading Toppy Ron 13 to 2. Uh, the best of the English uh, for the Valley Moor is a horse called Gid Gidley Park for Harry Frey. He's coming in off uh, an unbeaten run here, Paddy. Gidley Park is just the most beautiful horse in training. However, a part of me is like hoping he doesn't run there because I think it's all about next year. Uh, maybe leave Cheltenham behind, pick one other target if you want to go again this year and bring him back for something like a Brown Advisory. He is an absolute beautiful horse. Uh, I just think he's so raw and he got away with it the last day. He was still a little keen rem with the nose out and he got away with it and he won well. But uh, this race, for me, I was very interested in Slade Steel if Ballyburn didn't run. Slade Steel is a very good horse. The trip was a little short from the last day. He stayed on strongly behind probably the best novice we all think at the minute in Ballyburn. So I like him. Obviously, we just don't know again. This is why I don't like having a big opinion because we don't know who's going to run. But Slade Steel, if Ballyburn doesn't run, I would really like Slade Steel. Slade Steel, uh, second in the betting, comes from Henry the Bombhead's yard there. Yeah, I'd agree with Paddy. Um, you know, I think if, if Bally Byrne doesn't run here, I think he's a huge chance. I think he's a very good horse. Um, he's done very little wrong um, since Henry's got him. Um, you know, he's won his bumper. He finished third in the bumper in Punchestown. Bally Byrne and Jackson City beat him. Two of them have went on to win two grade one since. And, uh, you know, I think... I. Uh, I, even though he was second the last day over two miles, I actually think the step up and trip would suit him. Um, so I think this race would be made for him. Um, as long as Bally Byrne didn't turn up, obviously, you know, he, he could beat him something well the last day. But uh, if he doesn't, I think Slade Steel could take plenty of beating in this. There's a horse in this race. He's actually unbeaten uh, in England. A horse called Handstands. Uh, yeah, it's on the sheets there, tip to one. It's a 16 to one chance of... This horse is unbeaten in England. Yeah, still coming in as a 16 to 1 shot. Just tells you how strong the Irish hand is in this race. Just to touch on that horse, I see everybody raving about him. He was he was a lucky winner the other day. The, the second favourite made a bad mistake. And they all seem to brush it under the carpet. There's a bit of a wave behind Ben Paul and they're all jumping on it. He's not he's not good enough. Okay, fair enough. Shark, anything you like in this if uh, we're assuming Valley Burn doesn't run? Uh reason Tommy Drawn hasn't run that around this year and I'd say when, when he needs better ground he'd be a lot better horse. Um, there'll be a few of these ones in, up high in the bet in Valley Bourne that won't run. And I just I think Reed and Tommy Ron is a horse that the better the ground is the better he's going to be. And hopefully when we get to that time that he runs. I'd say he could run the Albert Barclay. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine with yeah. Paul Townend as he's way he's a fair horse, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's a proper horse, so I'd yeah. say he'll win the Albert Barclay. Uh, he goes to the party with the Slavi. But if he ran in this with one or two of them not running, he'd have some chance. He'd have no chance. He's the luckiest winner in the Lawlers and Ace. Did you ever see a race set up for a man who's nearly ready to retire, right? Who was happy to canter around the back and enjoy the day. And in the antique was in the heat of the battle for the whole race with every horse, and one fell in across the line and beat him. There's only one horse, hold on a minute, there's only one horse to take out of the race. His name is Ile Antique, but it's not that he goes over a fence. You think that every jockey was like you when you hit 30 odd that should retire? Because your butt, just because your butt was gone, that don't mean the rest of the was gone. Hey, there was only one man that stuck his neck on the line in Cheltenham last year, and it wasn't a jockey. Just no, but Shark, let's get to the bottom of it for the punches because that race, right? When they jumped off in that race, it was five of them lined up to maybe go with each other. It never works, right? It never works. They all wanted to make it. The 
horse that got the lovely quiet ride on the day of one, but the rest of them cracked. And your man loves to crack too, will it, Lanty? But he didn't crack till late enough for me to say that when he goes fences, he could be better than them all by a long way. <laughs> and I don't be God. Every man has their own so yeah, tri uh, tricky with the figure out. So <laughs> Slade Steele with a positive vote and reading Tommy Ron. Reading Tommy Ron is about as is 13 to do with the 7 to 1 shop if you shop around in the morning. If anyone has nothing else in that race, we will move on to the second event on the cards. The Brown Advisory. So the whack. This is the Whackers race from last year. So if you weren't with us last year, then <laughs> Paddy Merrigan, Paddy Merrigan, I think, spent the mo most of the night show up the Whacker, up the Whacker. And he also made a promise that if the real Whacker won the Brown Advisory last year, that he'd strip down to 12 stone and if he was going to ride him in the Gold Cup this year. So, Paddy, how's that going? I did that, but I was just a little bit worried about his pre season form. But he might bounce back. <laughs> Mike phones back, and there's reasons why he was he beat might. by a very good horse the last day, wasn't he, Shark? That's for sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, getting into the Gold Cup. A lot to talk about. <laughs> so, uh, the one thing I don't know a lot about you, but I know who'd be riding him. <laughs> Gavin, Sheep, Gavin, he doesn't know who's riding him. I know, I know who's riding him. You know why? Because I own a leg of him. Hey, I own a leg now. I tell her he owns the leg. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking to own his own pool. <laughs> this invoice from last year. You got to pay on, didn't you? <laughs> okay, it's going to be interesting when we get to the World Cup. We might save that one for last, Penny. Anyway, back to the Brown Advisory. Fact to file, another favour here for Willie Mullins. A six to four, maybe a seven to four shot. Paul Nichols might get on the scorecard here on the second day. He has stay away fave, second in the betting there, three to one. Uh, Gray Dawning, also another chance, good chance here for Dan Skelton. He is a four to one shot. But a horse I like in this is uh, Monty's Star for Henry de Bromley. It's definitely his intended run. Far the week, Dara. What you fancy? Yeah, Monty Star. Um, obviously he 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 won. He'd been to tell them last year, and he disappointed. But he had a very hard race with Hidden Valley Lake. He swam well about four weeks before it, and uh, so ran no sort of race. Um, but yeah, I, I actually even though he, Monty Star won on heavy ground the last day, I think the nicer the ground, I think he probably even suit him more. Um, so I definitely think he's an each way chance. Um. Back to file is in this as well. It's the easy favour for it, but I'd be very surprised if he ended up running in this. Um, I'd say he'd go the shorter trip. Um, stay away, Fay. Obviously, you know he was good in his first two starts, but I'm not really sure what to make of the cost for his chase the last day. Um, Capadano winning it. Um, I, I I actually like Dan Skelton's horse here, Grey Dawning. Um, I thought he was really good the last day, winning in Warwick. Um. He should have won in Cheltenham the time before that. He made a made a bad mistake at the at the last or second last. But yeah, I think I think it's a very open race if um if if back to file doesn't go here. Back to file if as Dara says it does run has come into this race, ran a two runner race and finished the only horse uh in in Leperstown last time out. I'm not sure what you can take out of that race. Gaelic Waller came down at the last, uh, well, unseated the rider at the last. Mark? Yeah, um, for me, um, whatever race Fact of File runs in, it's my nap in Chantham this year. Um, like, judging by what Willie does on a regular basis, he picked the races that he wants to win. Um, he warned the horses of running against each other if they can. Um, like you see, Gaelic Warrior is in the terminal there, and he has Facile Vega as well. And and you're right, like it's very very hard to see where Hustle are going to finish up, like. But he has three in the terminals. Um, just just to come in for you for one second, he's definitely running in the Brown Advisory. Back to five. Yeah, oh, yeah, back to yeah. Well, he's a five to one shot in the Turners. Okay, so it, you betting would suggest he will take take up the Brown yeah. Advisory. I certainly be going to the Pillar Junior tomorrow now and maybe having a good few quid in the shock. I think this is a certainty. 
in the Roman Oh, Michael? He's an absolute monster. I rode him out a few times. He's gorgeous, gorgeous horse. Whatever race he runs and he'll win. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's two and a half or three miles. I'd say he'll run the three mile race. Um, he'd be one now you could put in the accumulator. Last year, the Constitution Hill, Danny Burns, El Fabiola, maybe. Uh, he won't be beaten now. Very good. Eugene? I was just listening to Willie Mullins there during the week. He was talking about that someone told him about the times. He's got only two horse races left to start. The times were phenomenal in this. On the time he did, on his own, would suggest that I would just get out. He's unbeatable in this race. And that was that was tacky enough ground and leper sound on that day, Michael, yeah? Well, is that like, you know, this is their actual gold cup horse for the future. So, like, if there's anybody out there, you know, that, that, that would like to look to the future, if this sort of stays sound, he'll win the gold cup in the next couple of years. Very good. So, a strong, strong vote of confidence for fact to file. Six to four on the sheet. You'll, get, you'll definitely get better than that uh, if you go to your bookmaker in the morning. You might get seven to four or a little bit Petty. more. Petty. Are you advancing that price? I will lay you on the other horse, but not on this one, buddy. Are <laughs> you cowardly fucker? Because <laughs> hey, just like you, I think he is a bit special. And uh, look, he's definitely running here, so don't be afraid to back him. Um, we know it was a two-runner race the last day, but he just showed you everything he has in his locker. He's a good sound jumper. He travels strong. He stays well, and he's knocked your eye out to look at. He's a lovely horse. I do think um, it's no walkover, so if he does put them away in style, he will back up the figures Eugene was talking about. Super. Any other offer on the Broad Advisory? No, we'll move on. Let me thank you. Next race on the card is one of the featured handicaps. It's the Coral Cup, uh, a big two, uh, two, just over two and a half mile handicap hurdle. Unfortunately, as I said, uh, betting isn't on your sheets. Uh, a controversial enough horse, Langer Dam heads the market for this season, eight to one shot uh, for the skills. Is he off? <laughs> he's been given a, an easy time of it of late. If he, if he, he's coming into this race with, with no form, but he's, he's still in there as favourite. A horse I like in this is uh, for Nicky Henderson called Dodie the Great, a 12 to one shot. Uh, at the minute for Kenny Alexander, so he runs the uh, runs in honeysuckles colours. Uh, anyone else anything to offer on the Coral Cup? No, it's okay. I hope we're not relying on my tips for the handicap. So anyway, Dodie the Great, I'll stick my neck on the line. I'll, 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 I'll try this horse might have a chance to be run. Built by Ballymore. Built by Ballymore, he, he, sixteen to one shot. Yeah, he won a bunch of times the last day. Say he wasn't supposed to, but he still won very easily. So. Uh, if he runs it, he'll have a chance. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So the built by... rope broke. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the strong ropes like you, Sharp. The next race on the card, the feature race of the day, the Queen Mother Champion Chase. This looks to be a cracking, cracking race. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of John Bond. He's a 7-2 shot. Yeah, 3-1 to one there, 7-2 to two shot. Look, he's... To, his jumping can be suspect, and he's up against a super, super horse in El Fabi Olo. Edward Stone, best in English for Alan King, is definitely will definitely give them a run for their money. Uh, Paddy, the champion chase. Yeah, um, look, obviously the horse El Fabi Olo was absolutely brilliant all year, flawless preparation. Uh, he beat a good mare the last day who had good form over two miles, getting away it. And a lot of people were fancying Dino Blue. Well, boy, he put her away. So I think he put away his biggest danger. John Bonnet, it'd be hard to back him after watching the last race. Personally, he should have went ran him in the Ryanair, I feel, after what went wrong. But maybe Nicky feels there was plenty of excuses. Like I said, that weekend, the horses weren't running right. Edward Stone, uh, there's a lot of people uh, raving about Edward Stone after his performance the last day. He has absolutely zero chance of beating a horse like El Fabiolo. He went around Newbury. What, his biggest danger hadn't ran for a year. Uh, Boot Hill calved on the fence. Yeah, he had a beat before that. But there was no other dangers. he done, like, what he done in Newbury the other day, he could kill around Cheltenham if he done it. Not, not the, I don't mean that in a smart way. You can see the margin for Ura in Newbury. The horse is picked winging fences, but that's on a beautiful flat ground. You you start getting on your head down to the, the, 
jumps and shouts them up and down. I could see it going wrong, so I don't see him uh, trailblazing. But for me, luckily, I was wide enough to get on El Fabiolo at 15 to 8, and I'm sitting pretty you now. Yeah, so the race penny sounds a bit uh, beat down or blue last time. So I was giving, uh, that says a mayor's allowance uh, of seven pounds for Dino Blue, and I, Dino Blue is probably one of the bankers of the meeting uh, for Willie Mullins. Anything to oppose the favourite in this, Eugene? No, I think we should be paying constitutional meetings all this fella. I think he's the best field of trade. I, I couldn't see anything coming near him. Will Captain Guinness run here, uh, Darren, you know? Yeah, he will. Um, look, he was a good winner of the, the 4-3 and that, and, and then um, he did the Fibble 8 in Hart in Leopardstown at Christmas, and uh, I'd say they were only giving him a run at, at Leopardstown the last day just to see, you know, it, was everything all right with him. Um, so he finished third, El Fabiolo being 14 lengths. You know, he could, he'll be, he'll be dropped in off a strong pace, and, you know, you, you, I wouldn't be surprised if he did finish second to him this year, um, you know, with John Vaughan having such a hard race in... in Cheltenham the last day, and uh, for me, I, I think I, I don't think John wants a proper two mile chaser. Uh, you know, I, th I think he needs to go up and trip. And uh, you know, he's, he's normally been a sound jumper for Bar the last day, but yeah, as I said, if, if El Fabiola stands up and has a clean round, you know, he'll win. Uh, so the horse that beat uh, John Bond is in the beat John Bond the last day, uh, Elixir. The nuts is in here for the teaser. It's a twenty to fourteen to one shot on the sheet. He's definitely he's definitely twenty to one or more if you go about it. Shark, anything do you would you oppose him? He's a certainty yes. Uh, but I, I would oppose John Bond. I think that yeah. I think that Edward Stone had finished in front of John Bond. Um the uh, Willie's horse will break John Bond's heart, he probably won't finish. And the other horse will stay on and be second. Mark is shaking his head there. Well, I'm, um, I'm a big John Bond fan, to be honest, but I don't think he'll beat El Fabiola, but if El Fabiola wasn't running, I think John Bond would be a soft to see because Edward Stone would be so talked up about the English. Like, they'll love the horse. I would like agree, but uh, John Bond is a man. You could have said that the last day about John Bond. Yeah, but like, Yo, the, you know, the last John day, right? huge, but John Bond Paddy made a huge amount of mistakes, right? He still jumped the last in front of a horse that was running on empty. Like he has had a massive career so far from even winning his his drum of hand from winning his, his maiden, like you know, so if he don't jump better, oh, yeah, yeah. he yeah. won't he won't finish like that. I will sure say that. one thing in John Bond's sure. uh, defence, he has a very legitimate ex excuse for why he made mistakes. It's very hard to ride a horse tree wide on the pressure cooker, trying to keep in the horses jumping fences and it forces two mile chasers in to make a mistakes. If you're caught wide you're working harder just to get the same stride as the two in front of you. Yeah, well, I, I would put it this way. It, you know, I felt last year in the Shenzhen Order the Statement was written for second. I think if John Bond is written for second, he'll have no problem winning second here because I don't see anything. I, 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 I don't fancy a bookstone, to be honest with you. I think he'll be the first beat, to be honest. Appreciate it for me. I don't know when it'll run in this race. Uh, won't run. Won't run. That's fair enough. Well, for me, El he'd appreciate it if they left him at home. <laughs> <laughs> John, John Bond for me will finish second, but it'll be around and jumping. I'd say the ground is a big factor. Like if the ground shows up good, John Bond will have a lot better chance of being second than if he went to the ground. Um, but if the ground is soft, it'll be all oh, no. Well, he's going to win anyway, but if it's soft, he'll be further. Fernie Hollow is actually inter declared to run on Sunday. Um, keep an eye on him. He's four, is he fourteen to one there. Yeah. If he goes and wins on his year on Sunday, sure he's going to shorten in price. He's probably worth an each way bet. He's he's only beaten once in a bumper, and he ran away and ran off the bend and everything. He hasn't been beaten any other time. He beat Bob Allinger a length in a, in a maiden hurdle in Gorn. He's a very good horse with lots of problems. If he shows up and, and wins on Sunday and goes to Cheltenham, he'll, he'll be banged there for each way money. Anyway. So that's Fardy Hollow running in uh, the Grade 3 chase at... Nace on Sunday. So fairly unanimous vote, unfortunately, for El Fabiolo. Good mention for Captain Guinness, uh, each way for Dara, and uh, no chance on the English runners. So we move on again to what is it's a, turning into quite a controversial race, the cross-country chase. Uh, once upon a time was uh, 
race for cross country horses. It's turned into a, a race for a lot of horses that have won um, graded events. We've had actually had a lively discussion at the bar on how to fix this race, but it's not going to be fixed in time for this year's festival. Vanilla Indo, I think, is a super. It's, it's not on this sheet now. Vanilla Indo is 11 to 4 favourite for Henry de Bromel. I think that's spectacular value to win uh, this race. Delta Work is in there 9 to 2. Galvin is in a 5 to 1. Cocoa Beach, uh, conflate. Gordon Elliott is running a huge, will probably run a huge team of horses in this. Dara, uh, as I said, I, I fancy Manila even though here. There's nothing to say against him, is there? No, I, I think he'll win this. Um, you know, he's been schooling very well. Um, he always runs well fresh. He's going really well at home. He hasn't ran since December, and he finished fourth in that race at Ch uh, Cheltenham, which is a handicap. You know, the, the race in March is obviously a conditioned race, but you know, he finished fourth. He dropped in last, and um, you know, I think the, the first three horses that finished in front of him had 10 stone 2 and 10 8 or something, so he gave heaps of weight away. He had Galvin and Galvin behind him that day, so yeah, I, I think I think Manel Indo will take serious stock in this. He looks great at home, and uh, you know, he's very classy, gold cup winner, second in a gold cup, and uh, you know, he's taken to these fences, so I think it'll be very hard to beat. Is there a different approach for this race? Uh, like as you said, you're uh, from schooling at home. Do you take him out for a hack somewhere different, or is it the same routine? Even though his target is clearly the cross country race for the festival. Yeah, look, he's be, he's obviously been over to Cheltenham, and you know the Cheltenham cross country course is it's you know you only have to jump one bank, and the rest of it is mainly hedges. So I think as long as they've been there, you don't have to be schooling over them every day. Um, you know he's a brilliant jumper, and uh, he has the experience of being over there. You know, there is a place that they take them locally just to pop a couple of banks and things, but you know, the, the bank in Cheltenham isn't the high yeah, it doesn't compare to no, Punch it's, it's, it's or, no, or, no comparison. Or like, not gonna air, no, 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 no. Um, as I said, you could kick the hedges out of the way around Cheltenham and it make no difference. So, um, yeah, as I said, I, I think it'll be very hard to beat. Eugene, cross country. Look, I, I actually haven't seen the runners in it as of yet, but he is the, the class horse in the race. And the way they schooled him around um, in the autumn, around Cheltenham, fourth in the handicap, that he wasn't too busy that day. Class will prevail, I think. And I haven't got anything to oppose him at the minute in the race. Sharp? Yeah, I, I agree with the lads. He should, I think he should win. But I, I just think all these grade one winners should, should be carrying 13 stone in this race. And then to bring back the race to a normal race for the for the rest of the horses, if they had to carry a stone more, uh, every Grade One winner would carry thirty and stone, more than likely none of them run, and to make a great race out of it again. So I just think it's gone out of hand at the moment, and the only way they'll stop it is by doing that. Now, unfortunately, as I said, it won't be fixed in time for this year's festival. Uh, if there was anything I would like uh, to touch on in each way, there's a, a French runner in here called Hip Hop Conti might come in to the placings in about a 14 to 1 shot. So, fairly unanimous vote for Villa Indo. Hip Hop Conti each way is my bit. I'd say in the uh, race. key to this race is the race last year, in my opinion. Delta Work and Galvin finished first and second last year. If the ground shows up soft, you'll be back in Delta Work. If it shows up good, I'll be back in Galvin. They both ran in Nav and they're last Sunday week as a prep run. I thought they both actually looked, looked very smart. Now, I, I like to look at Galvin as well. But between the two of them, for me, and if I was to back one, it would depend on the ground. If it was good, I'd back Galvin. And if it wasn't, I'd back Delta Work. Galvin, uh, the race, Michael Sandwell finished fourth that day, and Delta Work was six. Galvin's a five to one shot, and Delta Work a nine to two shot. The throw, those two and Manila in the head, the betting. Paddy? Any opinion on the cross country? Yeah, um, look, obviously I really like Manella Indo. I tipped him up months ago, eleven to two. I think when he, when this horse done his uh, the handicap at the last meet and when he ran, it was poetry in motion. He travelled round lovely. He jumped like a book, and I said, God help them mother book and bookies. So Manila Indo, if you didn't already know, the next race is the. Johnny Henderson, uh, the Grand Annual, this is a big 
uh, handicap chase. Again, this is a fairly uh, wide open uh, contest. My mate Mozzie currently heads the betting for Gavin Cromwell, St. Roth, 9 to 1, St. Felician for Gordon, and St. 12 to 1. Anything to offer on the Grand Annual Shark, Mark? Sure, I suppose <clears throat> we'd have to wade in behind the men over there in the far corner. Carried the curl to victory last year. I think he's carried maybe six pounds greater um, than he did last year. If he went back three months ago, I think he carried 20 pounds more. So they'd have to do some job stopping him for the last three or four months now to get him back down to the weights that he nearly carried last year. So Mark is referring to Mascada, which uh, Dara wrote to victory. Will he get the spin this year, Dara? And yeah, he's, he's yeah that's, the, that's the plan anyway. Um, Mascada run here. Um, look, she was a good winner last year. You know, it, it turned into her favour. You know, piss rain over there. She she likes soft ground. Um, you know, she she was you know she won well, but obviously Dino Blue was in the race, and you know all but back all but brought the second last and the last fence with her that day. So um, you know if she probably jumped in cleanly. You know, it would have been it would have been exciting to see what would happen, but uh, I'm glad she missed them anyway. But um, yeah, look, Mascara, she's you know she obviously got a high rate and after winning that, and you know she's coming back down now. Ten marks that she'll have a chance in again, but as I said, I think the big field will suit her, and uh, look, she's, she's good each way price. Um, I like um, a horse here in this as well. Maybe my mate Mozzie, Gavin Cromwell. Um, you know, he's a horse that definitely. Going to win a big one someday, but um, you know he's knocking on the door. He finished second the last the last day in the Grade One to found fifty. Now he was ridden to finish second, but um, you know he was a good winner at the track in October. He's been placing Galway hurdles, you know, big handicaps in the flat. I think a race like this could suit him, and uh, I think he's a big player in this. My man, Monday. Michael Barry has arson here in a scary. Uh, hasn't been seen uh, since the Galway Plate will run. And um, he's good ground, I assume, yeah? Yeah, I'd say this race is made for him now. Um, he's very much looking forward to it. So Ennis Skerry is in there. He's a 20 to 1 shot for Michael and Barry Connell. And Mascada is 20 to 1 also for Dara and Henry de Bromhead. Uh, we move on. Uh, just Brian, before you move on, like, oh, yeah, Mark, well, just for the punt clubs, like, this race is a race that an outsider, like last year, Dara's horse was 22 to 1. Really, 25 to 1 at stages. Like, this horse is going back to where it had its greatest victory. I suppose one of the questions would, you know, for a lot of the lads there, the ground, what, how is it going to ride? Like, Shaq, the horse is going to Warwick tomorrow, that was called off. Like, will the ground dry up between here and Cheltenham? What's likely to happen now? Because, like, as Michael has said there, a while ago, between Galvin and Delta Work, it depends on the ground which way he'll be siding, but. I just know from last year with Mascada, Dara gave it an absolute peach of a ride, uh, got plenty of cover. For some reason, he's been ridden from the front this year. I've no question this is the plan since last year to come back into the ground. And, you know, I know Dara would be loving the soft ground, but I think this horse is probably laid out for this race again this year. Sure, the ground, I tell you, Charlie Post is only. Say 20 minutes from Cheltenham, and he galloped and washed completely out last night with, with what rain fell over there. So, for me, anyway, I hope that it starts rain after this week because we're going to end, we want to end up with soft ground. It's dry out very quick, though. It'll be three good days over there. Yeah, three or four good days to dry out, but just the weather forecast we're given next week as bad as this week, and like they haven't. They haven't been that far around so far. No, what's good this year is there's actually talking to the turf and course there today. We have an awful lot of grass on the track. We had no grass last year. And this year, the grass would help dry out the ground. Would, yeah, the and last season. year they got a bit of big over having no grass, so they're probably watching whether it's happening again. But still, what rain is a lot more rain fell this year than they did last year. And the ground last year was soft and dead. You know, so the, the lake, some, it's amazing. Some of the horses have handled soft ground. A lot of Willie's horses will because they're all French horses. But um, you'd be hoping, well, I'd be hoping that after next week with the rain stops. And if it stops after next week, the ground will be able to be lovely ground. Their soft, their soft is totally different. Though. Yeah, it's it's almost, Cheltenham will dry up very quick. Uh, it definitely will dry up quick. But like, when you see a lad 
not that far up the road, and they got it washed out in the morning. And a worried call up for a far as worried, only 20 minutes to uh, half an hour. I know the ref there, he said he didn't turn off the white for two days. We spilled more drink on the track last year after the Wednesday in the second race. That we dry out three dry days, right? and the place would be lovely, and Char could be licking his lips with you. Just to touch on that race, sorry, one interesting horse, he's 40 to 1. Uh, I don't want to tell you he'll definitely run in the race because. I see they have him entered in um, the Arkell as well. But a horse called Master Chewy, uh, he ran an ink field the last day. The winner's going for the Arkell. And I thought Master Chewy uh, was unlucky, he'd done a lot wrong, and he still ran really well. He beat a nice horse in Kent in the time before, albeit the race set up nice for him. But Master Chewy, a 40 to 1, if you could get a uh, non runner, no bet, maybe for 25s or something like that, maybe take a chance because if he runs in it, and uh, Twiston Davis, you know, has had many winners in Cheltenham, and I think this horse would definitely be a live outsider. I'm not sure you'll get that sort of a price now, Benny. I can see it at 16 to 1 here already. Uh, well, I had a fella so put can... a bet on before I come in. Very good. So that's Master Chewy for Paddy. And the last race on the Wednesday, we'll take a quick break after this race, just to get a, a few refreshments and stretch the legs, is the, the champion bumper. Uh, this is always one of the more competitive races uh, on the week. To take a very good stab at this race, most of the horses entered will probably stand up. Jalan Dudari is the 6 to 1 favourite for Gordon Elias. Jasmine Devaux is 6 to 1 for Willie Mullins. Romeo Coolio for Gordon is a 52. Tishan, 8 to 1. And the horse I'll be backing is an 8 to 1 shot, Maureen, for Willie Mullins. Dara, the champion bumper. Yeah, look, um, obviously Willie and Gordon and Jasmine and Devoe look very good in this. Um, the Gordon horse has done nothing wrong, but I like the horse of Paul Nichols' is, um, Tishan. Uh, won, won his point of five very impressively. Um, then he won his bumper um, a couple of weeks ago in Exeter. I thought he won really well. You know, he was, you know the Cheltenham bumper can be a very messy race. Some years, you know, they don't go be quick and, you know, horses get into trouble passages and that, but... You know, Paul Nichols, Harry Cobden, this will definitely be ridden up there handy. He looks a nice straightforward ride, and uh, the horse run well as well last year in the, in the same colour, so I think he'll he run well in it. I think he's about 8 to 1 in Tisha. Sharp, should I get this above her? Will he won't run that many. He'd run 10 or 11, I suppose. He's going to know. It'd be very easy to pick one of his out. Um, yeah, um, I'd say Gordon's horse is favourite at six to one. He looked very good, looked very good in his pint to pint. But like it's wide open, so it is you'll have Gordon probably with five or six in it and you'll have Willie. Although Patrick said there are night to Warden run as many during on run seven or eight. So um like that'll bring Willie. And usually when Willie runs that many in these bumpers, um he is not sticking out, not sticking out a mile, so he'll run something. It's the same as every other race that he has. There, you're going to have Willie this year with probably three horses or four horses in every race, and he's just no, told if, no, if it's a favourite that he, no. he thinks he might go with a favourite and think that he'd win. But it was another one just in case he don't win that something else will come through for him. But but the bumper in in Cheltenham last year, the bumper in Cheltenham, I think there was 27 runners in it. 24 have won since. Oh, and, on, and Willie had celebrated him yeah. in that race, yeah. and Which all of them came over to him. Every, every one, you know, but the only yeah. horse that didn't yeah. was chosen yeah. with this. Oh, no. But um, imagine like a bumper like that and 24 winners. Oh, well, it's and amazing. The winner, a dream to share, yeah. yeah. has ran once only since he's out for, out for yeah, he has one run there. He must have problems. Second half of the race, backed up by 17 hands. You have to believe the horse of that size ran the bumper last year. He's, he's a marvel for Chelsea now. Back to file. Back to file. He's a marvel. Another horse like back to file, really, for Antico. And this easy guard, yeah, scores yeah. horse. Uh, no, he won yeah, no, point point in this car last year. Uh, if you saw him, bot yeah, bottomless ground, three miles, and an absolute pace in this car that day. He won it very nicely. He was hurled to Arsenal Martin Brazos back in this at Christmas. 
Carl Gordon and Mount and he could run well in this as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I was caught, I was actually just going to bring up Gold in the mountain. Martin Brazil knows how to win uh, around yeah, Chelsea. Uh, so he's a one horse here. He's going to be trained for this. Um, he I, this I, horse won the, as Michael said, he won the bumper on Stephen's Day at Leopard's Star. And the other horse, Michael, I mentioned his Cantique, who actually finished third in the same race, is actually a shorter price, uh, who has come out and won since. I, I'd like to do them now, and, and another one worth mentioning. I know Gordon Elliott has a couple of the top three in the betting, but another horse of his called the Yellow Clay. He was fourth yeah. at Dublin Racing Festival. Um, got stopped, caught in the pocket, turning in. And if you watch it, he was a horse that was galloping through the line. And uh, yeah, I like him now as well. So a couple of, a couple of double figure prices uh, there worth taking on. The entries aren't actually out for the bumper. It's one of, I think it's one of the last uh, races to, to close. So the Yellow Clay of all the confidence. Uh, for Michael Maury, for myself, and Cantico, and Gold in the Mount. It's got a good picture. Sorry, Mark, what? Oh, you don't? You will be be getting that room about bit on Maury. No, she's not going to run? She's going to entry. Oh, okay, for the mayor and for entry. She, she won't win in there, she doesn't win. Okay. <laughs> Being the year that's in it now, with Maury one passing away, you would never know what could happen. True. Uh, Anyone else in line? Uh, if you want to hear my banker at the festival, I better give you a, a word on this. So, uh, look, I, I thought long and hard about Cheltenham this year. Um, I, I, I decided to make a horse on this my biggest bet. And uh, it's a horse called Jolando de Aris. He's an absolute um, beautiful model. And uh, I've never seen a big horse as well balanced. And I really like the fact that uh, this horse... He ran in a bumper first time out, and he was asked a question. And I always liked that about a bumper horse. The jockey gave him a squeeze in Fairy House. And for such a big stay and chaser, he quickened up. He reminded me of the flat horses, quickening out with a dip in Newmarket. I thought he showed plenty of pace. He then went and took on a nice Willie Mullins horse who had some good back form. He wasn't turning from a break, Redemption Day. But this horse travels like a good horse. He looks like a good horse. He has pace. He's well balanced. He can be ridden anywhere. And if you ask me, he's the absolute standout bumper horse. I think Willie's other horse, Argento Boy, has a chance. Maureen will go to the mares. Um, I feel she'll go to the mares. And if she goes to the mares, I don't think Willie has another horse that's shown as much promise as Jalan Dudaris has so far. So I did question myself two or three times. And then every night I turn on the video and I watch this horse back. He is an absolute machine. He can be ridden handy out in ball that cluster. He'll settle. And when he turns for home, he will he'll gallop through the line. Uh, and even at that, he might even quicken up in good style. I think Argento Boy is probably Willie's standout because he was so green and he, he won like a good horse. But for me... My biggest bet in Cheltenham this year is Jalan Dudaris, and I expect him to win. Very good, Paddy. So that's a strong vote of confidence for the favourite in the bumper, Jalan Dudaris, uh, around a 6 to 1 shot. So we'll take a quick break. We're halfway through the four days. Rero, uh, Paddy, Turners. Yeah, I have a really uh, decent fancy for a horse here. Unfortunately, the price is kind of a lot shorter, but I tipped it up a few weeks ago. Ginny's Destiny at 6 to 1. And it, it's a little bit like the real Wacker last year. He has good course form. He's a really slick jumper. I thought he put in two really nice performances. And I just think when I look at the makeup of the race, we know Factor File's not going to run here. We know Grey Dawning's not going to run. And um, so for me, it looks like the perfect opportunity for this horse. He can travel on the front end. He can jump extremely well. And I really think Paul Nichols has a proper horse here. And I think Ginny's Destiny can win it. You mentioned a very interesting horse, Aroco. I've been trying to get footage of he school and if you can hook me up last week. I couldn't get it anywhere. I've been ringing everyone. Does anyone have any videos of him schooling around Haydock? Because he clearly is a very good horse. But Ginny's Destiny is tried and tested on the course. He'll jump out handy, he'll travel well. And I, I genuinely believe Ginny's Destiny will win this race. So he's on, you, you see on the sheet there, he's a two to one shot. And they're on this, the taking his fact of file might not run here. So Ginny's Destiny you should be able to get somewhere near 130 uh, in that way. And as I said, Iroko, Arsa, I like each way. 
Michael, course form does it make a big difference here? Paddy's very, very much in favour of Ginny this time. Yeah, I tend to agree with him. Look, you know, you're going to have to win something at some stage. And uh, he's That's why he's the champion hurdle, obviously. Yeah, but this is probably one of their better chances. It's very hard to know what's going on. But Ginny's Essie and Oroko both have solid form and have probably best form under eight bar fast to five. Like Gaelic Warrior and Fast Side Vega both got beaten at Leopard Sound Double Race at Festival. Um, I'd imagine Gaelic Warrior definitely run. I'd say he wasn't 100% the last day. If he comes back to form, look, he's going left handed again. He got beaten in Tetlam in a handicap. So it's very hard to fancy him in a grade one. Fast Side Vega, it's very hard to know what to make of him this season. Um, so, yeah, in fact, the final doesn't run. Judy's Destiny didn't take a lot of beatings. Mark? Yep, I, I, I look to be fair. I um, I'm a bit of a Gaelic warrior fan, but as Michael has said, like he, twice he has ran left-handed, he has been beaten. So that doesn't sound that doesn't go argue well for him. Um, saying all that, he's a massive horse, jumps fierce well, travels fierce well. Um, came down to the last, the last there, but I, I think he's over that. He's over that. He's not. Ah. Uh, it's all right. I won't be. I won't be getting involved in the race. To be honest about it, um, I'm not a big fan of the English horses. To be honest about it, I hope they don't win any race. To be honest, I just, I just, I'd love to see us win in 20 races. To be honest, I'm sick of them because, you know, the amount of money that's been invested by owners in Ireland and having horses and training in Ireland and stuff like that, with all the money that's in the UK, they still don't want to push. They, they, they don't want to admit they're being beaten up a stick for the last six or seven years, and the more winners that the Irish can have in Cheltenham, the more I'd love it to stick into the, Irish, uh, the English show, to be honest with us. I disagree with that now, because I had a, I don't, we're down in Cork here, a, lot, a good pint-to-pint country, and we're depending on a lot of the English trainers to buy the horses, because if we're depending on Willie to buy the horses, that everyone down here would go hungry for the wood, because he, he'd go to France and he'd He'd rather buy a middling one in France than a good one in Cork or a good one in Wexford. He can spend very little money on, on the Irish pint to pint and buy a couple every year. And I think that I don't see the English going and having seven or eight winners or ten winners there to keep, to keep uh, the pint to pint thing going. Because if we have to depend on the Irish trainers to go buy the, the, the pint to pint horses, uh, we'll be stuck. Man, Shark, well said. We'll move on. Uh, Shark has crucified me for talking about handicaps and trying to give people a bit of value. So if no one has anything for the Perkins, uh, the one I like each way in here is a horse called Springwell Bay, a 12 to 1 for John Joe O'Neill. So if anyone else has anything, we can just move on. One short okay. word. Uh, a horse called Goshua Posh. I don't know if we'll get into the race. He's trained by Philip Hobbs and that uh, other young lad, the white lad. He's a real nice horse, but he's rated just about to scrape in. If he gets in off a lightweight, Goshua Posh could run well at a big price. So Goshua Posh uh, is a 25 to 1. Philip Hobb and Johnson White is the trainer of that one. We'll move on. Just, just fair, American Mike there must have a chance to beat. Sorry, it's a shark, shark you know, threatening me for the house about handicaps because he's. He must, he must have a chance of this year. Factor 5 is a certainty. Unbeatable. This fella beat Factor 5. And I think that with this horse, he must have a chance in this race. Someone tell Scorsese to give him the script. <laughs> just one, just one for the pretense there as well. Um, horse Gabby's Cross. I think he's about 25 to 1. Actually rode him the last day, he finished second. Um, he's a horse that's owned by uh, the Brookhouses and he'll win a big one. Um, he's been very unlucky. He's been placed in a paddy power. He's won a Galway Blazers. Um, he's a good bit lower over hurdles. He could sneak into this off a lightweight. He loves to have been in a rough of a handicap and uh, if he got in off a nice weight, um, he's qualified for the race. Um, so I think he will scrape in and uh, I think he's a good each way chance. Um, there's a big one in him Sunday, and he's just been. I think he, this has been the plan for a while, so he's a good each way chance. Twenty-five to one, I think he is. So Gabby's crossed there from Dara from the Henry the Brown Stable. 
Next race on the Thursday, third race is the Ryanair Chase. And uh, Banbridge in here, I think, is again another a short enough price favour in there, maybe around, uh, you'd probably pick him up at 11 to 4. In Va Alain is in for Henry at 4 to 1, Stage Star, best of the English at 5 to 1. Uh, Cappadano, 10 to 1, and Conflated, 12s. Eugene, right now. I have no real um, fancy for this, to be quite honest. Um, French Dynamite, Boss Morris, keeps his horses together. That horse has run respectable all year. Um, I'd give him an each-way chance. He'd be the only thing that I have an interest in that. Uh, French Dynamite, as it stands, is their pricing at 100 to 1 for this. It's his only entry uh, for uh, the week at Cheltenham. <clears throat> Dara, you actually rode the French Dynamite in his last couple of races, or actually all his races, I'd say, nearly have you. Uh, is he going to run here to give him a chance? I, I'm not sure what the plan is with him, to be honest. Um, you know, he's obviously he ran really well in the last in the race last year. You know, he he was in with a chance jump in the last, and um, you know, he's only been a couple of lengths, but obviously um, entry as well and things. So I'm not really sure whether he's a horse that needs top of the ground and been a bit unlucky this this winter. You know, he's you know it's ran in soft and heavy ground and that. So um, yeah, I'm not 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 really sure. I'd say entry or. And even I'd say Punches Town and Ferial could be on the agenda as well. So he's not a certain one, I wouldn't say. Michael, the best of Willie's here, Cappadano, is in this at a 10 to 1 shot. Appreciated also as an entry. Yeah, uh, I would appreciate it around Cappadano. I'm not sure. Obviously, he won well in the Pastoral Chase the last day. I'd say he'd go to the Grand National. Whether he'd run in this, I'm not sure. Um, I'll top it a bit in his bandbridge, goes back to ground again. If there's any bit of soft in the going. I doubt he'll ever run. Um, look, if Envoy Allen goes back to the form he was in last year, he's the class horse in the race. Um, he'll take all the beating in it. If, if he's back himself, you know. And maybe an each way one is, is Dan, Dan Skelton's horse, Protectora. The third behind Shishkin and Newbury last day uh, ran way too freely and, and they made a lot of use of him. Dropped back to two and a half miles. Should suit him. And uh, he's 25 to one there. I'd say he shouldn't be too far away. Good, so that's... Uh Protector at, uh, the third behind Shishkin, who isn't a bad horse uh, last day at Newbury. We'll uh, speed on again, so as Michael said, keep an eye on the ground for a lot of these races. And of course, if you're having a bit, make sure you're getting your uh, non runner a no bet in the morning. Stairs Hurdle is the feature race on the Thursday. T Hoopo Garden is mob handed in this race. He's T Hoopo in here, 3 to 1 Irish Point. Uh, he's probably somewhere on a 72 shot. Uh, Fergal O'Brien with the best of the English here. Crambo at 13 to 2. Noble Yates, the Grand National Hero, holds an entry. Uh, a 10 to 1 shot as a Sir Gerhard and Monkfish, the uh, enigmatic horse, uh, is in here at 12 to 1. Michael. I said it'll go down to ground again between like what Jack Kennedy rides, the Opel or Irish Point. Irish Point is probably the class here. He was second to Marine National in the Royal Bond last year. He was very good at Christmas in the Grade One in Leopardstown. First time over three miles. Um, if the ground showed up good, I'd say Jack Kennedy be swaying towards him. The Opel was very good in the Hatton's Grace over two and a half. Showed a bit of toe. Uh, he relish conditions. He was second in the race last year. I'd say if, if, if David Russell could have it back, he would. He was a bit unlucky. Um, I think Jack Kennedy probably holds the key to this. Obviously, Crambo was good in beating Paisley Park the last time in Ascot. I'm not just sure if he'll be good enough again. Noah Lates uh, is a bit enigmatic. Obviously, he, he was solid to win in Cheltenham the last day. I'd say the Grand National is probably his main aim again, but um, I couldn't really fancy him in this. I don't think he's classy enough. Monkfish uh, will be backed, I'd say. So I'd say it's Gordon Elliott, whichever Jack Kennedy writes, I'd like to write. Mark? Yeah, I'd be of a similar view to Michael on that one, and I'd be a big believer in a horse that finished second last year, would be coming back for a bit of unfinished business, but I do think the ground is key to, to this. If it turns up soft or anywhere soft, I think I'd fancy Tia Poopoo. Uh, Irish Point is an up-and-coming horse, no question about that. Um, 
I, I couldn't, you know, I don't fancy any of the other horses. Maybe Crambo, but the rest of them out with the washing. This will come down to the two Irish horses, I think. And, and the big question was as well, um, Daryl Spanzer, the Dorn Engineering, are going to run the two horses against each other, I suppose. Daryl might have a little bit of insight into that. Yeah, look, um, obviously, they're both trained by Gordon. Um, you know, I'd imagine, I'm not really sure, Irish Point, I suppose he could potentially wait for entry, but uh, Bob Ollinger would probably end up going there as well. Uh, just the one concern I'd have with Kihuku, um, is to me, all his best form is over two and a half miles. Like, he beat, he, like, and he won the Hatton's race this year and beat an Empire Pass, and they trotted around, and they sprinted up the straight, and like before that, Willie Mullins was saying Imperial Pass could be the danger to Constitution Hill. So for a horse that is setting out his stall to be a world hurling horse, you know, to have that much pace to beat Imperial Pass, to me, you know, obviously he did win the Red Mills Hurdle in Gorn over three miles. But again, like it was hardly a test of stamina. And, and I actually thought, I actually thought, that, I, I thought David Russell produced him to win last year. And to me, he couldn't. He got outstayed by um, Sire de Borley and Dashiell Drasher, and I just thought he was a little bit better than them heading over there. So I think he's definitely the one to beat, but I just like to see him go and do it now. Um, they said he's after improving and strengthening up, but uh, you know, if you look at his farm, you know, he turned over Honeysuckle as well in the Hatton's Grace. Honeysuckle won two champion hurdles, one of Mayor's hurdles, all over two miles. So I think he's a classy horse and. Um, I'm just not quite so sure. I'd just like to go and see him win over three miles in a true test. A tricky race, uh, to be honest, is there as hurdle. Paddy, is there anything to be said for the old warrior Paisley Park? Could he pull it out of the bag? Might be, could be his last race. You'd never know in public. He's 12 years old. He loves it around Cheltenham. Well, look, Paisley Park is the gauger. He's a very important horse in this division, and I'll tell you why. He is the marker for any stayer. If you, want, if you fancy a stayer, it's him. Uh, it, uh, to finish up on him, he is a big price. If you want to back him each way, he could run well. I think he'll struggle to win myself. Uh, Tiopo missed his chance. Uh, he got beaten the worst stairs hurdle in history last year, and I'll tell you why. His two main dangers disappointed. Paisley Park didn't run his race, and Joseph O'Brien's horse made a very bad mistake with a lap to go. That left an old pensioner, Sire de Burles, who probably can't walk in the gallops in Elliott's, going and winning the race. David Russell came in for a bit of stick, right? He came in for stick after this ride. He was pushing the head off him for three furlongs, and it took him the whole way. The reason he got into trouble is because he couldn't go forward. He, he pressed the button when he turned in the whole way. Now, I'll give you an angle into this race. If it's good ground, the two of them will run, and if it's soft, I think the Hoppe will run, and the other horse will go to entry. And it won't matter, because Crambo will smash the two of them coming up the hill late. He's only ran over three mile twice. Yeah, uh, hey, trust me when I tell you, this horse will smash them in the last furlong. So, uh, Crambo's very unexposed. He always looked a very good horse. When Gordon's horse won an entry, a very slick performance last year at Irish Point, Crambo was doing a half speed on his tail, only to be nearly brought down over a trip too short in a race that was ran so slow your granny could run in it. And, and this is just facts. Go back and watch it. I believe Crambo is Fergal O'Brien's first Cheltenham winner. Yes, he has other chances at the meeting. But when I go through this race, Tihupu couldn't win a week one last year through the reasons I mentioned. Dashiell Drasher was right behind Tihupu, or right beside Tihupu in Cheltenham. Any time Paisley Park runs his race, Dashiell Drasher can't get within five, six, or seven lengths of him. Paisley Park ran his race in Ascot. And Crambo got up to beat the strongest stayer in racing on the line. It's an easy win for Crambo. Forget about Elliot. If it's good ground and he runs Irish Point, he has a chance. The Hoppo has a good chance of running well, but no chance of beating Crambo. You're playing Paddy? You're happy Paddy Brennan isn't riding Crambo, but... oh, Paddy Brennan was a wonderful jockey and he had a great Hi, career. Paddy, and you and I, tell you one, I, I tell you one thing, I, I really like him, but it's like. Um, the two guys that fought He's years ago. He's not over 30 ago. like yourself. No, no. Oh, hey, Char, there comes a time when you have to save the boxer from himself. He, he, he'll win the mayor's novice hurdle and he'll retire on the spot, won't he, Paddy? 
the next race the hope is done remember that he has a chance of finishing second or third which horse is out of that race either uh, he, he has got a chance of winning i'm not sure whether he's definitely right but if he runs he definitely has a chance uh tell leave is the horse eugene's referring to I, there isn't a price available so i don't think it's a runner he, he is still entered if that means anything he is still entered the next race is the Festival Plate uh, Handicap uh, Chase over two and a half miles. Uh, again, uh, we won't linger too much on this. I'm going to offer up a horse uh, trained by Richard Bandy, a name not too familiar to too many people here, called Theatre Man. It's a 12 to 1 shot for the Festival Plate. And if anyone has anything else to offer, he must be a winner. You'd have to up twice. Get yeah, on, lads. No, he's, he's double interest. He's, he's in the brown. He's in my head. He was in my head. <laughs> Sorry. Saw him again. He's 12 to 1 and 14 to 1 for either man. So he's value on either. Anyway. Well, good, he's going to run twice in the four days. <laughs> never, <laughs> never know. No, no, Sharp. You've had enough run ins with the BHA to, to, to know that they don't let you run twice at Cheltenham. I was never in the stewards of my life. But your poor representative was. That happened, you represent me. <laughs> the stewards have put you to jail. Not when you shut them down with facts. Moving on swiftly. So, no, there's no horse back in that race, unfortunately. Uh, the next race on the card, I think this is, is, is building in to be one of the races of the week. It's a mayor's uh, novice hurdle. I think this will be a right good race. As I said, Paddy Brennan's going to retire on the spot when Dysart Enos wins this at 4-1 to one for Fergal O'Brien. Not until he does a Covega on it. Six in a row. So the favourite for this race is Brighter Days Ahead at 5-2 for Gordon Elliott. A joint favourite now actually with Jade de Grugy for Willie Mullins, Dysart Enos for Fergal O'Brien is 4-1 to one and Queen's Gamble 14-1. to one. So it looks like a three-runner race. Gordon, Willie, and Fergal O'Brien. Sharp? Yeah, um, I just think it's better days ahead. I, I love her. She's a fine mare. I remember last year going for the uh, bumper, the Patsy bumper. I thought I had a race chance of winning it. And she came up beside I've been in second there. She came up beside him, and you think that he would stop. You know, like she just took off, and that was it. It would be great to see Fergal O'Brien go and win, and Paddy Brennan, he's a very good jockey. He's been there for a long time. And um, he's one of the jockeys that is after teaching a lot of young lads everything, including this fat kid here beside me. Um, but um, he, he, like Fergal deserves to get a, a winner in Cheltenham, so yeah, it'd be great to see Paddy Brennan riding the winner on him. Eugene, would you be far or against uh, brighter days ahead? I think the mayor, Fergal O'Brien's mayor, I've seen her running two or three times, three times I think. Just to be looking to see her, and I think she's a very, very good mare. Brighter days ahead, obviously, is the big danger. Um, there's one or two others in there. There's um, Harry Derham's filly, is, is, or Harry Queen's Derham's, Gamble. Queen's Gamble. Um, I don't think she's out of it either, and he's a young trainer going places in England. Um, it's a very, very good race, and I think there's probably one or two others in there as well that, that um, are not going to make it easy. Yeah, Queen's Gamble is, uh, is coming into this race off, off three wins. Three wins on the trots, a 14 to 1 shot for Harry. Durham Dara, you see him sticking out here in the Mayor's Novice? Yeah, he actually rode in the race the brighter days ahead, one and out in the last day, and uh, I thought she was very impressive, um, you know, especially with Gordon and, and Jack as well. You know, they seem very sweet in her. Um, you know, she seems to be learning the whole time. Um, Paul Willie's mare looks very good. That Jay's de Grugy, um, you know, she was, I thought she, she was very good at Leopardstown, um, winning her maiden and then coming back and trip to win at, at Fairy House. So I think this is a very strong renewal. Um, Fargal O'Brien's filly has done nothing wrong. So yeah, um, Harry Burns filly, I think it's a great race to watch. And I think there's plenty of mares unexposed here. A mare that won actually yesterday, um, for Henry Majestic Force. I think she's about 33 to 1 there at the minute. She won a maiden hurdle yesterday. Um, they think she's quite smart. She won a pen of pine first time out as well. So 
Um, yeah, I think she she'll she'll be aimed here, and um, I think she could be a bit of value at a big price. But I think it's a very good race. And uh, yeah, a good race indeed. Definitely, I think will be one of the better races. Mark Etten's offer. <clears throat> I hope that um, when I see these two young jockeys here beside me, um, two really classy. It's not jockeys. you, Paddy. Okay. Two, two, two classy jockeys, two up and coming lads, um, with great futures ahead of them. I hope that Paddy Brennan wins and he retires because I want to see more of these girls riding on a regular basis. Last race on uh, the Thursday is the Kid Muir. It's uh, a long distance handicap chase, so one for the stairs. Tony Merton has a horse in here. Good time, Johnny, five to one favourite. Uh, there's a horse in here. He's entered at a meeting in the waters. I actually think he's a bet for the entry Grand National for Willie Mullins. He won't get in, so I'll save your money. It's a Grand National, no? He's, I think he's number 52. He's only got. Anyone else the offer? Anything to offer in the Kim Muir? It's a Tony Martin's horse. He was ridden to be in the first six in Leprechaun the last day. He was fifth. It's absolutely ideal. Now, he is declared to run the weekend. I'd say he could do it a few pounds maybe to go up uh, in handicap, but uh, Tony Martin got him ready to win the pretense last year. I think he rarely misses with one. And uh, Derek O'Connor rode him in this uh, against professionals. Um, I'm sure that was a tip in itself, you know. But, uh, I, I actually fancy one of Gavin Connell's in this. Um, I know the way you're thinking, and um, if 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 obviously if, if JP has a runner here, Derek will have to ride it. And uh, I just think this is his profile. Um, he didn't win a beginner's chase. He finished second the first day. He finished second on two occasions, and then they threw him into Grade One behind Gaelic Warrior Christmas. And uh, you know, I thought he was. I think he's only beaten six or seven lengths. Seven. Yeah, he ran he ran that good handicap chase at Leprestown as well. I think he's a horse that has a profile to, to suit this race and um yeah, as I said if he runs Derek Derek will have to ride him and I could see him I, th I think he could be mapped out for this. So that's I know the way you're thinking, all one word an eight to one shot there from Derek on Mark. Yeah, there's a horse there, am I right? Um Henry De Bromley trains it, uh Richard Victor Connolly, has bred it, uh Sherlock Hobbs horse. That's been knocking on the door a good few times and has been favourite for a few through races. And I we'd only be just teaming it up though from a look point of view. We have a we have a half sister involved with us in the Come On Racing Club, uh, with the same pedigree. And I've been watching it for the last kind of twelve months and just keeps hitting the crossbar and I don't know whether it actually runs or whether it's going to run, but it's entered in the race and I'd be keeping a close eye on it. It's it's entered in two, it's entered in the Ultima as well, so it could go either way. So that's am I right? Uh, an each way shot for Mark. That is uh, the Thursday. We go on to Friday. Uh, of course, Gold Cup is Friday. We might save the best to last since we have a real life chance uh, with the shark. Oh. First race on the car Friday is the Triumph Hurdle. Uh, you see there we've uh, an odds on shot. This is one of the races down the bottom here. Sheet, uh, Sir Gino is in there at eight to eleven. Paddy, the triumph hurdle. Yeah, um, look, we've another potential superstar in here, obviously, but we're all too fucking late. <laughs> the money. Uh, a lot of people like this horse when he won in Kempton. He was very raw. He was very green, but it, and he still. It was only like he done everything wrong, bar from the lad when he got over the last to the line. He sprinted through like a good one. He then downed the very good horse in Burlet Road, albeit I do think Burlet Road had excuses the last day. He ran too keen, but it's hard to see him reversing the form with a horse as green as Sergino, who won really well. So Willie Mullins has uh, the McManus horse that could improve Madjabra. Uh, I do think he's a very likely improver, but when you look at him, you also think, ah, he's next year's horse too. So realistically, Sir Gino, if he improves again, as he only had the, the one run from Kempton to Cheltenham, sure, he wouldn't stop him with a sledgehammer. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's an 8 to 11 shot for this race. Could be one uh, for your multiples. Dara is renting in there. He could have paused. I actually like the horse that Michael rode the last day in Leopardstown, um, Eskel Diamond. I thought he, you know, he probably didn't jump well enough for him early on in the race. Um, 
but I thought he got the hang of the play at times and he looked like he was close and he didn't have any chance, Michael, and he's uh, I'd love to get my leg across him again. He's a very classy horse. Uh, as you said, look, they really fancied him at Christmas in a maiden hurdle. He was probably one of the juveniles. Willie has a, a really strong team of juveniles this year and they thought he was one of the better ones. Um, he did everything wrong at Christmas. He was too keen. He didn't jump. The ground was too soft for him. Uh, I rode him the last day. I rode him quietly to, to run well. Uh, jump and improved as he went on. He settled well. And he ran home to finish sixth in a good race. I, I'd be loving to get my leg across him again. Um, I suppose it's worth it. I, I really like Willie's horse, Majbera. But as Paddy said, he's probably a next year horse. He's a fine big go a cup looking horse, but he's all there. He, he, he could be anything, I think. Uh, I suppose it's worth mentioning, like if you're talking so strongly about Sergino, um, which you've ever read that he was very good the last day, but Willie's a horse called Salvador Mundi, who was second to him in France. Um, I seen him school him the other morning. He's well able to jump anyway. Uh, he's probably one you could tip up, like he's 12 to 1 there. He was second to Sergino in France, got closer to him than anyone did the last day. If he runs in it, and um, if you, you know, Repeats the farmer to France. Would, would they run him in a uh, maiden even before then? Or just go straight there off the run in France? They'll go straight there. Uh, I rode a horse in the last year that was first run there as well for the same owner as well. They'd have no problem. I think he won it with a horse before that had, had no run that went straight there. So look, he's 12 to 1 and Sergino as what? He's 8 to 11. He was second to him, only beaten a few lengths in France. He's worth a mention anyway. Very good, thanks Michael, good night. So that's Salvatore Mundi, he's a 12 to 1 shot. And the each way bet there is Ethical Diamond, nominated by Dara. Eugene, anything there when you go back? Very hard to go against, against the two favourites, but Harry Darren there is it. I have to mention him already. I think he's coming up there with a few nice horses all the time. And Gary Moore is not as. No, he's no slow coach either, and he's a horse there to start the winning three in the front. There, if you go on to back the favourite, they have two nice each way bets that will they will run good races anyway, and they'll be there thereabouts. Very good, thanks, Eugene. Next race on the card is a competitive handicap hurdle. Uh, this is just over two miles. Uh, I won't go through the list of betting because there's plenty of value in this race. Paddy, have you seen that in here that's catching right? Uh, is that Tony Hurdle? Yeah. Yeah, I really like uh, the filly under control. However, like always, um, entered up and down the country. She's in Kelso maybe that early. There's a good meeting in Kelso early March. There is a nice pot there, so they might run her to give more, the more battle her. Yeah, yeah. If they run her in Kelso, I don't want her. If they don't run her in Kelso, I think it's well handicapped enough. It ran well behind Ashraw Diamond. She is a good mare. She ran well in Doncaster, and I think that was after a wind up. So, under control, I think off about 137. She already beat by Pirico Lord already, who's since gone on to Frank the Farm. And I think if Nikki keeps her away from Kelso and goes straight to the county hurdle, that would speak volumes. If he runs her in Kelso, don't touch her. Good, thank you, Paddy. Mark or Shark, anything on the county hurdle? No, <coughs> nothing there, just Michael. to be honest, but sure, like it's. Six or seven to one the field. It's, yeah. it's not a punter's race. It's if you want to have an interest to five or each way or something like that. Um, I would have no strong opinion on it to be honest. Sorry, with you. Stay out of it. Uh, absurd, Willie's. If the ground is good, he he won't be far away. Obviously, the way he had to come out, but he turned in the grade one behind Ballyburn the last day, looking a winner, and he stopped that just coming to the last. He got tired. He was what was he seventh in the Melbourne Cup. He's all class. If the ground is good, he, he'd run a big race. Good, thanks, Michael. That's absurd. He's in there around a 12 to 1 shot for Willie Mullins. I like King and Kingsfield for Gordon Elliott in this. Um, he finished third in the race. Michael was just on about with absurd. Um, he, it took him a while to win a maiden hurdle. Um, he was second in the Royal Bond, then he won a maiden hurdle at Christmas. You know, with a big field in Leopardstown, they rode him differently. They got plenty of cover, and he absolutely pissed in. I think the race we made for him, um, I think he's a horse that would like the, the hustle and bustle of a handicap. I think he's about 10 to 1. I think he's a horse that could be a bit classy and maybe it's better than a handicapper. So, yeah, I think he's an interesting one, Kane Kingfield, if he runs in this. Lovely. Thanks, Dara. Uh, next race on the card cover is the Albert Bartlett uh, Grade 1 uh, Novice Hurdle. 
Uh, it's down on your sheets here. So we have High Class Hero, Reading, Tommy Ron, Denson City, Gidley Park is in there again. Uh, Shin Ah Bob and Captain T. Shark? I said earlier about Reading, Tommy Ron. Whichever he rates he goes to, he thinks that he's going to go here. If he goes here, he's he's a great value at, at 15 to 2 or whatever price you get. Um, he's, he's so many trade bet, he's, he's a horse that. Whatever race he goes for, he take all the reading and make it. Just if he goes here, I, you won't know. No one will know because Willie has no one. He won't know himself. So, um, but he he's the horse. I think he'd beat. I think he'd beat any of Willie's horses. Yeah, well, he's he's uh, coming into this race on beaten, uh, beaten at his point to point, all right. But at the minute, as Shark said, he's a bit of value. He's fifteen to two uh, for this race, Dara, the Albert Bartlett. Yeah, I, I think if reading Tommy wrong, um, I think he's the best form coming into this race. If he does run, um, I'll, you know, Dancing City won the the two six race in Leperstown the last day, but um, yeah, if he just beat Predators Gold and Jatara, I'm not sure he was the best horse in the day. Um, and for me, I think reading Tommy wrong, uh, I think if he goes here, I think the step up and trip will really suit him. And uh, I just thought high class hero, you know. Just won an, I thought he only won an ordinary novice hurdle around Turles. He had a horse of Henry's, easy fella. He only beat him a length and three quarters. Another horse of Willie's, Watt Pat, ran there today, and I'd say he's still running. So I think that form for me wouldn't be strong enough. And uh, I think reading Tommy Wrong has the strongest form to offer. Oh, Michael? Yeah, I'd agree with Dara. I was very disappointed with Ike last year on Turles. Um, one I like in this uh, actually beat me on the horse that won today. Uh, Rushmount, he won very well today. Lecky Watson, he beat him ahead in the main hurdle in Turles there before. Uh, and he was actually third behind Sharks Ross Reed and Tommy Rong in the Nace race uh, after being way too free and caught very wide. So Lecky Watson there, 12 to 1. He, I think he was sixth in champion bumper last year, which obviously was a very good race. He was being unlucky not to win a bumper before that. He's a very classy individual. If he settles, um, I think he could be the one in this. I suppose it's worth mentioning. Shanna, Bob, Chris Donovan, he won a point point for Chris Donovan and Bannon Dennis only up the road last year out of the English horses, uh, he's worth a mention. Very good, so Shanna, Bob, uh, trained by uh, Nicky Henderson, is a uh, 10 to 1 shot there for Donnelly Paddy, any strong fancy in the Albert Bartlett? Yeah, uh, just when I was coming out, I heard Michael uh, talking about Lecky Watson, uh, just the one thing with him, we, I think he definitely has the ability to do it, However, I do, um, I fancy him, but I worry about his temperament. And in a race like that, do you think he might just blow himself? That'd be my only worry with him if he'd be too keen. But um, he's been there before and he, he settled well in the, in the champion bumper last year. Probably got there a bit soon. You know, he should be used to the preliminaries and all that. Uh, I'd say Willie wasn't happy with any of the last day in the law. Or he was caught away with no cover. If they dropped him in and ride him to run well, I'd say he'd be right there. Uh, yeah, so look, he's clearly a good horse. Uh, just there is that little worry if the jockey can get him to switch off. However, just a quick mention, uh, a horse everybody's forgot about is Johnny Who. He looked very impressive one time. Uh, he's been running over uh, inadequate trips. I do believe he is a stayer, and I do think if he runs in it, he will run uh, much better than he managed to run in Newbury and in Shelton the last day. So Johnny, who had a big price, uh, could outrun his odds oh, in a tricky, very tricky race. Very good, thanks. Penny, we'll come back to the Gold Cup to finish uh, the night. Um, we'll jump uh, forward to the Hunter's Chase. Uh, it's not on your sheets now, we'll give you a quick rundown on the betting. Shark has been awfully quiet, he's saving all his words for the Gold Cup chat, I think. So the, the Hunter's Chase, uh, there's a good horse in here. Fern's Lot for David Christie is 3-1 favourite. Uh, it's on the line who uh, was very, very brave and stuck his head out to win in Nace the last day. Billaway is in there at 8-1 to one for Willie Mullins. And then you've got Famous Claremont is an 8-1 to one shot. Premier Magic for Bradley Gibbs is 10-1. to one. Eugene? You would be the man to talk about these hundred chases. Anything you like in here? You'd have to look at on the line. I think second last year. He was the best, definitely the best of the Irish. Bradley Gibbs 
Brighton Gibbs came in there under the radar last year with a horse that was very, very good in the pint of pints. He's not going away and he's there again this year. I haven't seen his pint to pint form now this year. I don't know whether he ran or not. He, he won. Yeah, all, all he's, I'd he's be afraid of another him. Bradley Gibbs coming up from Motor Yeah. No? But if you're looking at the Irish, I think David Christie's horses are not firing this year. Um, and Kimmett says that on the line is, is low. Big, very, very big engine, but he's, he is an enigma. He's hard work. He needs Derek. And I think Derek is going to stick with him. So that there's a lot to be said for that. Very good. So that's in the, it's on the line. 7 to 2 shot for Emmett Mullins. Dara? I think Fern's lost. I think he's a. I think he's a very, very good horse. Uh, I think he's a better horse than him. On the line, I think he's much classier than him. Um, I thought like on his performances and what he does, like even in Turles the last day, like might have been the strongest of races, but like on bad ground, he absolutely just galloped him into submission. Um, I'd just be worried with Emmett's horse. You know, the race in in Nace, like the last day, they literally. I th like even Billy Way, I'd say Billy Billy Way was a thousand to one yeah, jumping yeah. the third last. Like you give him no chance, and he's only beaten. So I'd just be worried that that race might take its toll on him. But I think if if Barry O'Neill can just get Ferns Lock to spit it out a bit, I think um, I think he's a horse that's improving. Even though Dave Christie's horse might have been firing, you know this lad is still he's won his kind of point. He should, probably should have won in down rail as well. Only Dave's other horse, Remillis, took him on up the side in down rail and left uh, another horse of Emmett's come and do him. So for me, Fern's lock, I think he's even a bit of value at three to one. And uh, I think he's, yeah, I think, I think he's, I think he's very good and I think he'll take a lot of beating in this. So that's Fern's lock uh, for Darren, three to one uh, favourite for the Hunter's Chase. The Mayor's Chase is next up on the card. A uh, very, very strong favourite here. I think in Dino Blue, even money at the minute. And then you've got uh, Allegory de Vassi, a 7-2. Again, Willie with the first two in the betting here. Gavin Cromwell has a good hand in this race. Limerick Lace at 11-2 and Bright Sale, 8-1. Uh, somebody fancy price runners. You've got River to Tell is a 20-1 shot. Fantastic Lady, it seems, is best of the English Bears at a 25-1. Sharp, the Mayor's Chase. Willie has a very strong hand in it again, so he has. Um, it's, it's hard to get away from, from the favourite in it. Uh, the blue, blue he, he just, she's real, very, very good in my opinion. Um, and she's probably going to end up one of the bankers going over there. So she's, I don't, she's even money tonight. I say she'll be, she'll go off at four to six. There's a, there's a lot of these horses that's over the first couple of, over the days, four days. And, I know a lot of them are short, but I, I definitely will be putting four or five them together or six them together because, like, bar the fall or something extraordinary happens, they'll all win. And um, Willie's going with some team of horses over, so he is. And his horses are in such good form that I, I think the English lads are nearly afraid to take on the Irish going over, so there. But um, I think the favourite here will win. One horse I do like at a price in here. Uh, Amy Murphy is a horse called Carol's Pass. It's a 25 to 1 shot. It won the last day out. And I think, <laughs> look, uh, I'm not yeah, one for yeah, back yeah, in yeah, short price favourites. It's 25 to 1. It's a bit of an issue. Everyone's You're worse favorite. than a politician. You're everyone's friend. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> I'm glad you know it. I'm glad you know it. Do you want me to get you up in the dog? Doing my best not to tip all the favourites you've tipped all night. Shark Day. Will you cover the Martin Pike? Quick winner, tip a winner. Brian, to be honest, before you go away from that, like, yeah. you, you have to. Yes, yeah, and I'm annoyed because she beat me tonight with a 28 to 1 horse. So I'm sick. I think the outsider went well today and I had to do me on the runner. Whatever. I think, I, like, I am I right to think JP on Dinah Blue and Limerick Lace? Because you have to see <coughs> the two of them running against each other. The Rich Ritchie horse there, Algori de Vesey, the way it won in Lace the last day. 
Like it strolled around, strolled around, jumped the last, and just picked up the, the hostel in front of it. Finished second last year, beat by a very, very good mayor. Like I, I know the Mullins camp thought they couldn't get beaten last year with Algori de Vesey. Um, a bit like Tia Pupu maybe going back to try and do undo the wrongs of last year. I I, I know I like the dive nine of Dara, put them right, Dara, put them right. At a price. Al Gori de Vesey, I'd be, I'd be calm if you quit him. Very good. So one, one against the favourite at least, and Al Gori de Vesey will be uh, seven to two shot for the Mayor's Chase. Uh, quick mention for the Martin Pipe. This is a, a wide open handicap. God only knows what horses will turn just, up in this race. Just a quick word there on the Mayor's Chase. We have a man here who's written in every Mayor's Chase in Ireland. Dara. Sorry, Dara. <laughs> the one thing I question with Dino Blue is um, she's no far over the trip. Um, you know, like, it's obviously two mile, four and a half. Um, you know, she's a mare that's able to fa follow around El Fabiolo. And, you know, the, she's been campaigned as a two miler and only, I'd say, for connections, she'd probably be running in the champion chase. Um, but I actually like two of Gavin Cromwell's here as well. If the ground is soft, I think Limerick Lace is a big chance. And if the ground is good, I think Brides Hill has a chance. Um, I, I see he did an interview the other day. And he's, he's, he's sweet on both of them. And I think two of them are nice prices. And I'd say they could outrun their odds as well. Very good. Thanks, Tara. The Martin Pipe will be the last race on the Friday. Anything to offer on this? Get your no pal out live. <laughs> Lively. Pen and paper. Live. Uh, there's a horse in here called Making Headway. He's 20 to 1. I am... He's a very lightly raced horse. Last year's winning connections. He won a Newbury the last day. He seems to be streetwise enough to win a race like this, but he also seems to be progressive enough. So, uh, making headway 20 to 1. Uh, last year's winning connections. I do think um, this horse, when he won a Newbury the other day, he jumped every hurdle like a horse that was ready to go and uh, compete in a race like this. So, I genuinely believe. That making headway and win the Martin Pipe at 20 to 1, barring any uh, accidents of running, because it is a very well handicapped horse. Thanks, Paddy. I'll offer one. I like a horse called Built by Ballymore. 14 yeah, to 1. If you want to back a loser, right, get your law pads out again. <laughs> right, if anyone else is at an offer in the Martin Pipe, we will jump to the blue ribbon the bins. I cut shark loose by all you did. <laughs> As you can see uh, from your <laughs> sheet there. I know you're stuck for a jockey, but is Paddy Brennan in the run? He definitely would be. Yeah, okay. without, without. I can buff him now if you want. So, Gallop in the shop I is actually... not talk to you anymore. There's one thing about old friends. You mightn't have to see them for 20 years, but they know who you are the day you meet them. Right. Right. Gallop in the shop is actually drifted. You probably get him around even money. Uh, for the Gold Cup this evening. Faster Slow, who beat him in Punchestown, is at 5 to 1. Shishkin, 8 to 1. Jury Kalam, 10s. Blatant disrespect from Paddy Power there. They have failed to put Hewitt on the sheet. He's a 4 to 1 shot. Has that, has <laughs> that little love romance? Sour. Sour. Isn't out for that. I like to see. And you've got a couple, of, there's some very good horses in this race, of course. Can you. Oh, yeah, well, Jesus. How dare I forget the real wanker, of course, who was uh, seen in behind Hewitt in the King George. Shark, we better go to you first. Hewitt, he's ready to go. Yeah, he's ready to go. He's in good form. Um, he's done a couple of bits of work during the week with him, and he seems to be well himself. The ground is a worry. You can see what rain has fallen. Um, like, on good ground, I really fancy him. Um, just with I wouldn't run him. Probably, I'd say I wouldn't run him on last year's ground again this year um, because there's a few races coming up behind it that we we, we think about, you know. But um, on good ground, he'll be, he'll be right there. And Willie's horse, he's very, very good on soft ground. Now, the last two days we're after seeing Willie's horse, he won very well both days, but he just didn't go to the line like he did last year. I just... Looking at him, I don't think he's as good as he, were, he was last year. And I'd be hoping that Hewitt, I said it before, uh, the King George, I think he's a lot better than he was. Like last year, we went every cockfight in the country, man. And we picked up... We, we won a lot of them. 
but, yeah. but like he he won he won a lot of money. He picked up a lot of money. But this year we kind of trained him different before. Like he was only back in training seven weeks before uh, he went to the King George. And now he's not a big grossy horse as easy getting fit. And he came all over the King George great and we'll give him two weeks off again. But I think he's a lot better this year. I I'd like to think he's twelve or fourteen pound better than he was this time last year. And like last year he, he ran a cracker in, in in the Cold Cup. He he came down the hill, you wouldn't stop for any horse in the race. And um blew, he uh, he always um it's a, 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 a patch in every race and then he comes back on the ride. I remember Rachel saying after she rides him in, in, in Sandown, she said she saw turning in that she was going to get well beaten. And she said after seven or eight strides he was back on the ride and it was all over. I think we were all we were watching the King George, we all thought you were well beaten. He's a he's a remarkable uh, horse for you, Sharp. He's tough out. Yeah. He's tough as nails. In the King George, um I I was walked the track with Gavin and we we're over at the far side and I just said to him at this point we looked across at the far side over to the stand and I said you could be 10 or 12 lengths behind these here but don't worry I said the last two or three furlongs will be your best furlongs and um, he said after the race he said to me he said only for I said what I said to him he said I, I could have pulled them up but he said um, they did go away too hard like he, he made the run in the Galway plate over two miles six and you know to go hard over in, in the plate. I never saw him going easy in the plate. And he was able to make the run. He made a run last year in the Gold Cup. And then Ruby that knows everything come out and said that uh, they, they didn't go hard in in the um in the King George because he was trying to back up for Paul Townsend. Um Fro Frodham jumped out, made the run, he does it every year. And Jump in the second, uh, Ruby took him on, or um, Paul took him on. And if you met Paul this minute, he'd say, Yes, you're right. And they took on each other up front, and the Blend Tower Barra, um, Seskin, he, he fell. But I honestly think that the way our dad finished, I think he was only, Seskin was just bobbing along in front of the two. There were none of them going to, going to far, going far. But listen, with a bit of luck, and if we can get dry ground, He's there, and I think he's entitled to be there. Yeah, yeah. So Hewitt has a stand of uh, a 14 to one shot. So certainly a bit of definitely each of value here, considering the favourite is uh, now even money. Michael, uh, Gallop in the shop, I think probably he does need a bit of a cut in the ground. So if, thing go, if things go Sharks' way and the ground dries up, would you have any concerns for him? I don't know what I'd be concerned about it, but I think he's more effective on softer ground. I think the performance he put up at Christmas, uh, no horse would get near him if he comes with that level of form again. So I'd agree with Shark in that the last day at Dublin Racing Festival, he probably wasn't as exuberant or, or as amazing as he was at Christmas. But, you know, maybe they were writing him accordingly, you know, he probably was thinking, I'd say Paul was thinking about Cheltenham as well, you know, he never really asked him over any fence. He was just letting him in and pop and pop and pop. And, you know, he... He was looking around him the whole way up the straight. He never really got any kick in the belly. Look, I think if he shows up in the farm, he shows up in the Christmas. He's been there. He's done it. He's won a Martin Pipe. Uh, he would have won the, the Turner and only tripped over the back of the last. He won a Gold Cup. He's been there and done it. Um, it's very hard to get away from. I've no doubt Martin Bradley will have faster flow absolutely prime for the day. But I just don't think over that trip he'd be good enough to beat the big Gallop and the Champ. I think they missed the trip. Missed the trip with faster slow. They should have ran him in the King George. And I think he would have given Hewick a great race. And said he was a non-runner at Christmas. Now I know he's came Are out. Are you saying Martin Brazil would have beaten Charles? No, that's not what I said. I said he would have given him a great race. But I think they do. I think they missed the trick there. They should have ran him in England at Christmas. But anyway, that's not me. Uh, if Darren's first run was this in the same form he was when he when he beat Brave Man's game. He's definitely an each way, an each way bet. He's good value for that. He's a gorgeous big horse. Dara? Yeah, look, um, he's in great form at home. Uh, he's done plenty of works. He's plenty fit enough. And, sorry, uh, this is, sorry. Uh, gentleman's game is the horse we're referring to. He's 25 to one shot. Gentleman's game, yeah, look, he's, he's been a very hard horse to keep right. You know, he won his beginners in, in Leopardstown. Um, 
over a year and a half ago and I'd say he was only 60% fit today and he'd be Diane Maximus, eight or nine lengths, who went on to win an Irish national and, uh, you know, for his third run over fences to do what he did in Weatherby, uh, you'd have to be impressed with it. I don't think we still know how good he is because, you know, he, we haven't seen him, but uh, he's in great form at home. Um, you know, he's touch with everything says, says right with him, but plan is to run him. Um, but Gadam and the Champs, I think, is a worthy favourite. Um, you know, I think horses of his calibre, I think ground makes no difference. You know, them real top good horses, they go on good, soft, and, you know, he won the Martin Five, he's only good to soft, he's won yield and ground, so, um, you know, he was a bit disappointed in the John Durkin, but I think they rode him differently. You know, as a young horse, he used to be very exuberant and keen, and they kind of rode him to switch off then, but even going back to the Gold Cup last year, I've never seen a horse been last with a circuit to go and put in the performance he did to win the Gold Cup. So if he turns up on the day, I think it'll take something special to beat him. But uh, I wouldn't swap my for anything to finish in the frame for him anyhow. Very good. That's gentleman's game. He's 25 to 1 now. Paddy, is Brant, have you said Brandy the English runner, Shishkin, Long Presse, Cora Grandpa, a brave man's game? Pick up the microphone. Anyway, just to go to this race, obviously it's the big one. So let's touch on Gallop on the Champ. Uh, he's been absolutely brilliant this year. He, when the pressure is on, he put in a massive performance. And the pressure was on when he got beat the first day. Uh, everybody kind of was like lukewarm. And then to come out and do what he'd done when he got a kick in the belly was serious. He won the last day as you would like. Slowly ran race, ridden cozily, won easy, put faster, slow away, effortlessly. We all know he has the best form in the race. Can he back it up? I don't know. If he brings his best, he's a great chance. Fast or slow is a nice horse, but Gallopon looks to have his measure. Sishkin could be a 1,000 to 1 after three fences, or could be a lot shorter. He's that good. Jerry Kalam is a little bit forgotten that the fact, uh, if he did underperform on the day Gallopon put in the best performance, he might run well. Lahan Press had the perfect prep run the other day over a trip too short. Is a light runner. Brave man's game should be a million to one to win this race. There's guys tipping him up, talking about backing him in the win market at 12 to 1. If you gave me a million to one now, I wouldn't have 20 cent on it in the win market. He missed his chance last year. He was ridden too close to the pace. Paul Nichols thinks I'm a madman, but if he listened to me, he would have had a better chance of winning. Um, to touch on Dara's horse. But I like that horse. I backed him to beat Brave Man's Game. I was called the donkey. I was. I was queuing up all day and they called me a donkey to collect when he won. However, I worry about the Gold Cup because a fresh horse, in my eyes, would might get out of position if he makes a little mistake. I'd like to go and watch the horse school. If he went to Leperstown for the final school in there, I think he has to go there. If the trainer doesn't bring him there, Mouse Morris is a genius. You tell him I said, if he doesn't bring him to that school in there, he's making a big mistake. The horse can't come into Cheltenham that fresh in a Gold Cup. The guy who trained for St. Percy to run away with a Brown advisory brought him into Cheltenham off the back of a hurdle run in Gorham Park and presented Percy lined up at the Gold Cup like he never, like he never seen a fence in his life. You can't bring a horse in that hasn't got the preparation. So if you can't get him to the race, bring him to the school in the day in Leperstown. Shark's horse, I would never, ever write off this horse. He got beaten in France. He has excuses. The ground was bad. He got beaten in Galway. The ground was probably dead in a big way. Before that, the most progressive uh, profile you ever had. Absolutely think on good ground. But here's one thing, Shark. I believe your best chance is, is if you ride him for the big finish. I don't... I think last year you ended up in the pressure cooker through no fault of your own. The horse in front fell, left you in front, and then unfortunately for you, Skelton likes to win at seven out and took you on the whole way down the hill. Now, I know Harry Skelton. He's one of the best jockeys in England, but I need to put a sign outside his door saying, slow down. Right? But Ch Shark's horse ended up in the perfect position until the pressure was put on him too early. He then hit a flat spot and, he's, and he fell. So my two cents to you, Shark, is find the middle ground and come home with that big finish. That's, I think that's you its best chance. Uh, the real Wacker, out of form this year, has some okay runs. He has to step up on what he done last year. But I have a sneaky feeling there is. He's tweaking one or two things. And 
I do feel he could outrun his odds on the day. Can he win on this year's form? It's very unlikely. But at 40 to 1, there is one bookie who actually has me barred. But they, they are, I actually asked, I asked a guy the other day, um, but he put a bet on for me. He is a massive price. I think it was 40 to 1 without Gallop on each way. So that kind of a bet, you can take a chance. So to wrap up the race in one, Dara's horse is on exposed. Shark's horse clearly has a chance on good ground because just because he got beaten Galway, go back through all his other form. I was in Kilbegan a couple of years ago and I, I had a horse running in that race and I had him back to 33 to 1, a US 1 and an 80 to 95. And I remember the horse I backed fell and I had a big bet on him at 33 to 1 and he fell at the second last. And I remember thinking we'd have won on the bridle. And then I realised we came up against a horse that had about £5,000 in hand in an 80 to 95 <laughs> handicap hurdle in Kilbegan called Ewan, who went and won it. So any man who wants to rise off a horse that came from Kilbegan and before that cost £800, who won a King George, won a Grade 1 in America, and won a Galway Plate, would have won a Curry National. You can't write him off. And trust me, I'd love to sit here and run his horse down for the crack tonight. But I do think on good ground, uh, you'd be a fool to write off you. Would. And if you ask me who will win the race, I haven't a clue. <laughs> I think it's very hard to come back to this year. So I this may do it. And we all know that this may do it. But get Galvin Shop to come back again. I think there's all against him. I think that the bookie is just that something's going to come out of it. I think that uh, Dara's horse has a chance. Yeah. The other horse that um, I think the Sharks horse is strong can do and he wouldn't win. But last year they say that the quality of the Gallant Shops, the horrible rider, came to that. And they were, I think I think myself to be quite honest that the horse, he was riding the horse like and the horse didn't give him that ride. He got up, he gave a great ride to win. But if he gets into that trouble this year, he's not going to win it. Very so, true. like, I think I'd go against Gallops and Shops. Where I go, I'd love to see Dara with you. Or the Shark with you. And it's an open race. It's more open than they think now. Right, we'll finish on that note unless anyone wants. Oh, All right, right. Paddy, just, just, just to let you know, I did have two each way bets in the Gold Cup. And I failed to mention Cora Grambler and the Real Wacker Pool at massive prices. I genuinely don't know who will win the race. But they're the two horses if you want to back. I back Car Grambler each way, and I back the Wacker. And if the ground was very good on the day, I'd get Shark to have the 15 grand on you. <laughs> Folks, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed your evening. And I suppose just uh, uh, anyone stick around and buy a raffle ticket. And just a quick mention for our horse, all the money from tonight goes to two very worthy causes. So I see the lads from Madden Search and Rescue on the back. Uh, I can, I've known firsthand the good work these people do. So, look, if you make any few quid and you feel like giving it to a worthy cause, the Mallow Search and Rescue and the Ronald McDonald House, two very, very worthy causes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do the raffle straight away. Thank you. Thanks, guys.